It is now, of course, still in the morning hours. This is Steve Douglas, along with Doug Maxwell, Ted Reynolds, Eddie Fitkin, and Hal Walker, in the Grey Cup telecasting booth set to bring you 1956 football wrap-up in Canada between the Grey Cup defending champions and the champions of the West, the Edmonton Eskimos of Coach Pop Ivey, and the representatives of the East, beaten finalists in the Grey Cup the last two seasons, Coach Douglas P. Head Walker's Montreal Alouettes. Doug Maxwell and Ted Reynolds right alongside here now. Hal Walker checking up on players he'll be spotting this afternoon. Eddie Fitkin getting everything facts and figures-wise all ready for what we hope in almost perfect weather will be a great football game in Toronto Varsity Stadium this afternoon. Doug, speaking about the weather, supposing you set it for them exactly. Well, this is one of the finest days for Grey Cup football that I think I can remember in about the last 20 years, Steve. Cloudy skies overhead, but uh, the blue is peaking all the way through, and those clouds are not the rain clouds or the snow clouds that the weatherman had earlier predicted. The temperature would be a sunny 32 or 33 degrees, and the fans sitting in the stands are all together now. They're not worrying about rain, snow, any of the bad weather that might have come. This, I think, is without a doubt the fear of football weather. The band down below us on the field, just having marched up the field in the formation of a gray cup, certainly augurs well for the game coming up in a few moments. They were playing the gray cup march, which, according to the figures we have, was composed by Dorothy Evans and Ted Workman. And the fact that Ted Workman is also the name of the Alouette vice president might give you some idea of how they are working for this particular game. As far as the wind is concerned, there's a very, very slight wind, nothing to worry about from either team's standpoint, coming from the south to the north, the field and varsity stadium running north and south. We are on the west side of the stadium, looking down to the field below. Doug, I think we might mention here the fact that even the weatherman has been slightly confused all week and of necessity had to do a little change in forecasting the last two or three days. So for some of our audience uh, far removed from Varsity Stadium here in Toronto, if you read forecasts of perhaps uh, total overcast and very temperatures around 40 or so, that has been changed. The overcast is only about 50%, and what little breeze there is seems to be moving the clouds. There was a threat of snow last night. This did not materialize, but the big tarpaulin here at Varsity was put down on Thursday night when about a one-hour sudden snowstorm hit Toronto and left maybe an inch or so or less and very slippery conditions. Speaking about slippery conditions, this afternoon the field, the top surface is still slightly frozen, but when some uh, 24 football players and six officials start thrashing around out there, it could become just a wee bit on the greasy side. Uh, Doug, we've been sort of hogging things here. Let's uh, make Mr. Reynolds do a little work. Ted, of course, represents, for those of you who do not know, the western part of Canada, working for CBC Television in the city of Vancouver. And so for those of you out there, you'll be glad to hear his voice and know that everything is fine with Ted as he sits here and waits for the start of the big ball game. And for those of you in the east, we'd like to have you meet for the first time, Ted Reynolds. Thank you very much, Steve, and good afternoon to football fans across Canada, especially all you good people away out there in Vancouver. Uh, there was a remark made here in the city of Toronto about three days ago by a well-known columnist that Vancouver did not have the Grey Cup anymore, so they sent the weather to Toronto. Well, if we sent this weather from Vancouver to Toronto, Steve, it is certainly nothing to be ashamed of. It's a glorious day, as you have pointed out. Beautiful day in uh, the city of Toronto, and if they were at all worried about every seat not being full because weather might do something about it, I'm sure the place will be full. The Edmonton Eskimos were the first team to come out for their pregame calisthenics this afternoon. They arrived on the field at 10 minutes past 12 and went through about a 20-minute workup. Now, they had both Don Getty and Jackie Parker, of course, uh, going through the offensive quarterback maneuvers. So uh, there's no more definite news yet on just what Pop Ivy has up his long sleeve. The Alouettes arrived on the scene a couple of minutes later, and the Big Red 
uh, were operating, of course, down at the other end of the field, and both the teams just left the field, and they should be back in uh, now just about 20 minutes. The band is now saluting the Grey Cup defending champion, Edmund and Eskimos, out there. They have formed an E. And their uh, maneuvers this afternoon have certainly been beautiful things to behold. Now, the Ed Edmonton team, of course, uh, playing possession football, no doubt had hoped to receive right off the bat. One thing Montreal Alouette fans were hoping for came true just a few moments ago when they uh, drew the right to receive. So Edmonton will not open with the football. That is, barring unforeseen incidents, they won't open with the football. In a Grey Cup game, of course, you can never be quite sure just what is going to happen. But Montreal will be receiving when the football game gets underway. And back they'll be using Canada's Mr. Football of 1956, the young man who has been highly honored here in Toronto all this week, handsome Hal Patterson, along with Pal and James, and the Edmonton club will have either Mobra or Shipka, who of late has been doing quite a bit of kicking, uh, booting the ball to him. Patterson, of course, for Montreal, along with Sam Echeverry and Jackie Parker and Normie Kwong of the Edmonton club are the players on everyone's lips this afternoon, but no one is forgetting such great defensive stars as Anderson of the Edmonton team and that mammoth Montreal line that, of course, is much bigger than anything we ever see in the West. But as we've pointed out, it's a grand day. Steve, you Torontonians can be very proud of the weather you have trotted out for us today. I think we are, haven't we, Doug? Oh, we certainly are. There's no doubt about that. And the color that has existed through Toronto since about the middle of the week of Grey Cup is being shown in particular out here this afternoon by the drum majorette corps and the band. Earlier, they had formed up into the Grey Cup itself, and then you saw the big E for the Eskimos as they marched down the field. Now, of course, they're going through a bit of a can-can routine to Orpheus in the Underworld, the dance choreographed by John Stansel. Their drum major is Alan Thompson, the drum majorette in charge, Dorothy Hill. And it's certainly a colorful sight down below us here as the fans stream into Varsity Stadium and there's little doubt that every seat in the stadium of the entire 27,000 odd will be taken this afternoon. They're streaming along Bloor Street to the north. We've had a magnificent parade here earlier in the morning and all during the week there have been parties, receptions and luncheons and what have you, all part of the Great Grey Cup Festival. And the fact that when they were playing uh, the big Edmonton E, whether or not the Alouette band were being a bit facetious in playing with a little bit of luck from My Fair Lady, we don't know, but uh, maybe that's a, a comeback uh, from last year's game, or maybe it's hopeful toward this coming game this afternoon. Uh, Doug, speaking about a little bit of luck, there was a note uh, pointed out here, you know, American Thanksgiving is a big football day. That was Thursday of this past week. And uh, Wake Forest College, uh, where Douglas P. Head Walker used to coach, was beaten in their annual Thanksgiving Day Classic with South Carolina by 13 to nothing. And somebody suggested that might be rather an omen on the good side for Edmonton. But then another chap came right back and said, that's all right. But Sam Echeverry's old school, Denver University, won up the Colorado Aggies by 39 to 13. So that sort of reversed things. I don't guess, and I'm sure that uh, Ted will back me up on this, that we need too much uh, discussion about what Oklahoma, the birthplace of the young Mr. Ivy, has been doing lately. I think they're running for 39 straight games, so if there's an omen in that, maybe Pop is on the happy side, too. Well, I think you can look for omens all over the place today, and the experts, and who isn't an expert on Grey Cup Day, have been trying to predict what's going to happen this afternoon, who will start at quarterback, what type of defense will be used, what will the Alouettes do? They're predominantly a passing team. Will they suddenly come out and run? And if the Edmonton, predominantly a passing team, or a running team, will they come out and pass? Well, no matter what happens, we'll soon know in the 60 minutes of stirring football in the 56th Grey Cup. 
And now the big giant A for the Alouettes after the E for Eskimos as the band leads from the south end of the field down to the north, playing when the Saints come marching in. And maybe with a little bit of luck and when the Saints come marching in, we're picked on purpose. The band may be just a bit biased, of course, being from Montreal with the red uh, pants, white stripes down them, and the white blazers, the drum majorettes in the opposing style with the red tunics and the white skirts. All in all, a fine getaway for the Grey Cup Day here in Toronto. Just passing by the goalposts now, and incidentally, if any of the fans here are thinking of pulling down the goalposts uh, after the game, maybe they'd better think again because uh, those goalposts are in there to stay. They're in steel pipes that are sunk in a concrete socket about three feet six inches below the ground. And as far as I know, they have only been pulled out once, and that was when uh, Queen students in a Queen's varsity intercollegiate game a couple of years ago it took about three hours, but they finally did uh, manage to get them out. So that uh, those posts are in there to stay this afternoon, and it's doubtful if anybody, no matter how enthousi enthusiastic they are at the end, will be able to do anything for them. Well, that's the picture in the Grey Cup Warm up for this afternoon in Toronto. Fine weather, no snow at all in sight. It looks like a great afternoon for football between the two best football teams in Canada, the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes. We're back here at Varsity Stadium, Toronto, and we're roughly 15 minutes away from Great Cup kickoff time of 1956, the Edmonton. Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes. And for those of you who are interested in making note of such facts and figures, we report again for you what Ted Reynolds said before, that Montreal will receive the kickoff from the Edmonton Eskimos. So let's check with you right now the offensive starting lineup for the Montreal Alouettes. At left end, it will be Hal Patterson, number 75. At left tackle, Probably Ted Elsby, number 67, replacing Jim Staten, who is hobbling as the result of a leg injury. That we'll check just at kickoff time and verify for you one way or the other. At left guard, Charlie Gibbons, number 52. At center, one of the great Eastern All-Stars, Tommy Hugo, number 48. At right guard, the real big guy outside of Tex Coulter, perhaps the biggest in the Montreal squad, Herb Trowick number 56, and right alongside him at right tackle, Tex Coulter, number 60. Tex will do the booting this afternoon, along with Sam Etcheverry on occasion, perhaps, for Montreal. At right end, Red O'Quinn, number 73. In the backfield for the Alouettes, at quarterback, Sam Etcheverry, number 92. At left halfback, Bob James, newcomer to the Montreal club this year from Auburn University down south in the U.S., James is number 99. At right halfback, Bob Pascal, number 86, another first-year man with Montreal. At fullback, Mr. Pat Abruzzi, number 83, the big four scoring leader of the 1956 season. And at flying wing, one of the fine ball players on the Alouette squad, Joey Pal, number 82. That is the offensive starting lineup for the Montreal Alouettes, which will be checked once again for 100% accuracy just prior to kickoff time. And Ted, who will be handling play-by-play -play in the first quarter, will verify it for you then. The officials this afternoon, the referee is Harry Bowden of Toronto. There are three umpires working, Norm Crichton from the city of Hamilton, and two gentlemen from Winnipeg acting as umpires today, Bill Nairn and Cliff Roseboro. The field judge is Paul Dojak from Regina, and the head linesman is Bob Lye of Hamilton. The sixth umpire, the sixth official actually operating as the third umpire today, has been official in Grey Cup competition. This is the third year running, and he, generally speaking, handles punt situations and checks particularly for interference possible calls on deep forward pass combinations. 
As part of the color that occurred earlier in the day, we had the selection of Miss Gray Cup, who turned out to be Mary Wasco, a fourth-year science student at the University of Manitoba, representing the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. A 20-year-old, blue-eyed, blonde, five foot four inches tall, and 112 pounds, and a very fine choice indeed as she came through the parade. Well, down below us at the present time, we have the Montreal captains and co-captains, offensively and defensively, along with the Edmonton Eskimo captains, at the present time, awaiting the arrival of His Excellency, the Governor General of Canada, who will participate in the official kickoff. Then at the north end of the field, we have the band of the 48th Highlanders, along with the choir from St. Michael's College, who will participate in the halftime ceremonies and in the halftime entertainment, while the Alouette drum majorettes are awaiting the appearance of the entire Alouette team. And what a change this must be in this 1956 Grey Cup from the earlier Grey Cups that took place. The Cup, as you know, put up by Earl Grey, one of the earlier governor generals of the land, for a competition in 1909. And the first Grey Cup game, as you might expect, hardly rated any publicity at all. They didn't even mention in the write-ups following the game that there was such a thing as the Grey Cup. And what a change that must be in this day and age when the Grey Cup is fought practically every day of the year from one year to the next. Well, let's have a look now at the Edmonton starting lineup, if we can get that one from Steve Douglas. You can pass it over now, just what it looks it will line up starting at this 1956 game. All right, Doug, based on the fact that Montreal will receive the opening kickoff and move offensively on the first play from scrimmage, Edmonton's defensive setup should read like this. This, again, will be checked for positive accuracy just at kickoff time. At left end, Frank Anderson, number 51, normally an offensive guard, but a whale of a defensive end. At left tackle, Reed Henderson, number 65. At middle guard, Frankie Morris, number 52. Right tackle, Roger Nelson, number 66. Right end, Bill Walker, number 75. The linebacking spot, the left outside linebacker, Bob Kimoff, number 80. Left inside linebacker, Johnny Tatum, number 42, the offensive center. Right inside linebacker, the great Ted Tully, number 70. And right outside linebacker, newcomer to the Edmonton squad this year, Joe Mobra, number 77. The half defensive positions taken by Raleigh Miles, number 898, and Bill Rokamp, number 74. And probably Oscar Kruger, number 94, as the safety back, although Jackie Parker, of course, number 91, plays that a lot, too. Well, now, directly below us, Appearing on the field is the Governor General of Canada, His Excellency the Right Honorable Vincent Massey, who will meet the captains and co-captains of the two teams, shaking hands now with Normie Kwong. Harry McBrien, the Secretary of the CRU, introduces him to Herb Trawick and to Sam Echeverry as he goes the rounds of the six captains who will be officiating for the two teams in today's game. And as soon as His Excellency moves back to the special box set up for him, we'll have the game almost underway. There will be, of course, the official kickoff to go through, and then we'll be into the pregame ceremonies all set. Down below now, meeting the various governors of the CRU, is the Governor General. As the Edmonton Eskimos come out to the field, they're wearing gold pants with green stripes down the side, white sweaters with green numbers front and back, and gold helmets. Incidentally, this is the first year that both teams will be wearing stockings. All players must wear stockings, according to a CRU ruling last spring, because as the CRU governors said, their legs are not a pretty sight. So there will be no bare legs on the part of the football players, although you may notice some on the cheerleaders and the drum majorettes, and uh, who's to say that uh, it shouldn't be that way. Now out at center field, Mary Wasco, Miss Gray Cup, 
along with His Worship, Mayor Phillips of Toronto. And we see Ralph Cooper of the Canadian Football Council down there. Also, Super Mayor of Metropolitan Toronto, Frederick Gardner. Waiting now for the official kickoff to take place. And of course, they're swamped by the various press photographers uh, who will be trying to get pictures of this particular part. And it's all part of the excitement and the tension that makes the Grey Cup game just what it is. The stands have rapidly filled now. There are still only a few seats remaining. And now, the national anthem. skies overhead and hopes on the parts of both East and West. The 1956 Grey Cup game between the Montreal Alouettes coming out from the south end of the stadium. Let's have a look as they come on to the field through the line of drum majorette. Alouettes wearing the silver white pants with red stripes down the side, red sweaters, white numbers front and back, and red helmets with a white stripe down the middle of it, and of course the red stocking. Both teams very cognizant that this is the third meeting in a row of the Edmontons and the Montreals. Edmonton, of course, having won both previous games by scores of 26 to 25 two years ago and 34 to 19 last year. Of course, there's all sorts of psychological reasons for the Montreal Alouettes to want to win this one, just as many for the Edmonton Eskimos to want to make it three in a row and thus join only two or three other teams in the history of the game who have been able to win three games in a row. Now for the official kickoff. The moot point just as to who will kick off out there. They've got the ball teed up, but about 16 people all set. And there it goes. In the rush, you can almost see five feet go forward and only one ball go down the field. One of the finest ceremonial kickoffs since Viscount Alexander did it a few years ago. Doug, I think we are getting pretty close to kickoff time here. The Edmonton Eskimos will kick off for the Montreal Alouettes. Alouettes will defend the goal to our right on your TV screen as you look at it. That is the south end of Varsity Stadium. The football is being fixed firmly on the tee at the Edmonton 45-yard line. Play-by-play -play in the first quarter, it's Ted Reynolds. Thank you, Steve. Joe Mopra, number 77, will kick off from his own 45-yard line. The deep men are Patterson in the middle with Pal and James. The kick goes wide to the right and out of bounds at the Montreal 25, and we'll do that all over again. Trying to keep that ball away from the dangerous Patterson. Mobro picks up a 10-yard deficit for the Edmonton club by kicking the ball out of bounds. Trying to keep that ball away from the dangerous Patterson. Mobro picks up a 10-yard deficit for the Edmonton club by kicking the ball out of bounds. And we'll do it over again from his own 35. Edmonton to our left at the north end of Varsity Stadium. 
Patterson in the middle, Pal to his right, and on his left, number 99, James. They're standing now at about their own 15-yard line. And once again, referee Harry Bowden gets them set, and the kick comes from the 35. There's the whistle, there's the boot. It's short, bounces at the 30, being picked up by Pal. Pal is snared just as he gets across his own 35-yard line. The uh, first man down in there, number 54. And number 83, Jim Shipka. So immediately the Edmonton defense changes and the starting team that was given to you by Steve Douglas goes in. Kamech and Berry were both in for the kick. It's Alouette's first and ten. The first uh, running play of the game and Etcheverry handoff to a Bruzy. Bruzy whirls and dives across his own 45-yard line. And that's going to be close to a first down. Hand off to Abruzzi. The tackle was made by Oscar Kruger, and they're going to measure on the first running play of the game. That offensive line for Montreal, Patterson, Stat, Staten, Gibbons, Tom Hugo is the center, Trowick, Holder, and O'Quinn. The ends are number 73, Red O'Quinn, and number 75, Al Patterson. Now a flanker sent wide to the left. Sam Echeverry calling signals. They were less than a yard from the first down, and Echeverry is going to throw. It's the long, long pass down to the 30-yard line. It was meant for number 86, Bob Pascal. He could not quite get under it, so it will be third and still about a foot and a half to go for the Montreal Alouettes. Haskell was the intended receiver. Third down, Montreal. Kimoff charged in. He is the linebacker who has taken Lindley's place. There's the handoff of Bruzy. World gets across the 50 to the midfield stripe before being snowed under by a maze of Edmonton tacklers. And uh, Abruzzi goes for the first down. Bill Rokamp, number 74, led the assault along with John Tatum, who came up from his inside linebacker position. Edmonton in the 5-4 defense. Now Etcheverry flanks the man wide to the left. The handoff is to James. James across the 45 to 40. And he's finally pulled down after rolling for another first down to the Edmonton Eskimos, 30 Almost the 35-yard line, just inches short. Roley Miles, number 98, finally moved in to stop James. And it's first and ten for the Montreal Alouettes. Who are rolling with a vengeance here in the early seconds of the first quarter of this Grey Cup game. Now it's James, a flank wide to the left. Flankers left and right, the handoff goes to Pascal. He moved across the Edmonton 35 and uh, was stopped in there by number 42, John Tatum, who is the offensive center and the defensive left inside linebacker for the Edmonton Alouette, taking the place of the great Kurt Burris, who was one of the stars of last year's championship team. Now flankers left and right, Echeverry going back to pass. The rush is on him and he's down. For a big loss, a loss of about seven yards. The big rush put on him, and leading the attack in there was Frankie Anderson, one of the great defensive ends of Canadian football. Third down, 15 yards to go. Montreal will kick for the first time in the game. Sam Echeverry will kick, standing back at the 55. Your deep men are Steve Mendrick and Roly Miles. Mendrick on the near side. The kick bounces, picked up by Mendrick. And Mendrick is hauled down after just getting back across his own five-yard line. And uh, the defensive team for the Montreal Alouettes goes in. The tackle was made by Doug McNichol, number 74, and number 67, Ted Elsby, who is taking the place of Staten. 
Only 37 yards, that kick by Sam Echeverry. Of course, the first punt of the 1956 Grey Cup game. And here come the Eskimos. Offensively for the first time in the game. And Parker is in at quarterback. To start the game, that, of course, was the big question. Who would be at quarterback? And on the first play, the handoff went to Normie Kwong. Kwong moved across his own 10. It's second and five for the Evan and Eskimos. Big Billy ship, number 68, made the stop. There's the Don Getty in at quarterback and the handoff. No gain on that one. They got just across the 10, perhaps. Johnny Bright was the ball carrier. Moran came in. Dex Coulter. And the Eskimos are forced to kick after getting no place in their first series of offensive plays. The benches are immediately below us. Deep man, Carpuck on the far side, closest to you, Joey Powell, number 82. Edmonton Eskimos forced to kick from their own 12-yard line. Jackie Parker standing inside his own goal line gets it away it's a good kick coming down to the 55 where it's taken by Carpock Carpock turns and gets back just across the 55 yard line before being snowed under with Don Berry leading the charge down there along with Big Bill Briggs one of the real veterans of the Edmonton Eskimo team and the Alouettes take over just inside Edmonton territory on the Edmonton 54 yard line that kick of Jackie Parker's traveled 44 yards. There's Sam Echeverry giving his team their instructions in the huddle. He sends only 11 men on the field. There's a handkerchief, the first one. On the handoff, the ball was moved ahead to the 51. Elsby, number 67, was the player who forgot to move in. He has replaced Staten, and he wasn't out there for that play. That was the first penalty of the 56 Grey Cup game. And it moved the ball back to the Montreal 51. First down over again, 15 yards to go. There's Echeverry looking for the receiver and the long pass meant for James. Knocked down, almost intercepted. Bill Rocamp went high in the air and almost had that ball in his clutches as he was defending very well. He almost hung onto it, but he was high in the air and lost his balance just as he knocked the ball down. So it's second down, 15 for the Montreal Alouettes. We've played just on three and a half minutes of the 1956 Grey Cup game from Varsity Stadium in Toronto, and there's no score. It's Montreal Alouettes second and 15 at their own 51-yard line. Pascal is flanked wide to the left. Echeverry drifts out to his left, slips, the rush is put on him, and he is snowed under for another big loss back at his own 40-yard line. Bill Walker came charging in there from defensive right end. Bill Walker came storming in that time to throw Echeverry for his second big loss this early in the game. Alouettes are forced to kick. Echeverry drops back to his own 27. Your deep men are Miles and Steve Mendrick. Mendrick closest to us. Echeverry gets away another rather short kick taken by Roly Miles at the 35. Putting a little slippery, Miles dances back across his own 40, where he is brought down by number 54, Marty Martinello. And the Evan and Eskimos have the football. And there is no score in the game. Montreal, no score. Evan and Eskimos, no score. Parker, number 65, Bruce Colder. 
intercepting a Jackie Parker pass on the first play with Getty at quarterback. Kwong on a handoff had gone two and a half yards. On the second play, the split T option with Parker throwing the pass interception by the Alouettes who take over at the Evident 45, first and 10. Etcheverry with the pitch out to Abruzzi. Abruzzi being chased. Ducks away from one man. A beautiful block, and he rolls down across the 40. A tremendous block in there by Red O'Quinn. Gave him an extra five yards. Tully, number 70, finally came up to put the stop on Abruzzi, who has looked dynamite in the early stages of this game. And Abruzzi's had the ball. He has moved it. The gain is seven yards. It's second and three for the Montreal Alouettes. At the 38-yard line of the Edmonton Eskimos. Now they pitch out to the left. Again to uh, James. James finds a big hole. And it's finally pushed over and rolled out of bounds to the sidelines after getting inside the 25. Johnny Bright got to him first. And he was finally pushed out by Big Roger Nelson. Billy Ship through the key block to cut a brosy loose as he took the handoff from Sam Echeverry. And the Alouette threatening now have it first and ten inside the 25-yard line. Echeverry's handoff is to the second man, a brosy across the 20-yard line. And Anderson again, number 51 is in there to put the stop on the hard-charging Montreal fullback. Frankie Morris, the middle guard, number 52, the former Toronto veteran, a real veteran of Grey Cup football, was also in on that tackle. Now the Esks tighten up their defenses, and they're in almost an eight-man line. The handoff this time is to Pasco. Pasco! Spins, gets across the up to the 15-yard line before he was stopped by number 42, Johnny Tatum. Pasco got about two on the carry. And now the Montreal fans who are down here from Montreal by the thousands start to chant at their big red team to go. It's third and three. Echeverry flanks two men wide to the right. And off is to Abruzzi. He gets running room. Spins across the 10 and down to about the 8-yard line of the Eskimos. As that Eskimo forward wall is being outcharged by the big Montreal line. Oscar Kruger, number 94, and Johnny Tatum, number 42, came in to put the stop on Abruzzi, who has been the payoff man so far in this first quarter for the Montreal Alouettes. Nine minutes unofficially remaining in the first quarter. And it's a scoreless football game, but the Alves have the first big threat going. It's first and goal to go for the Alouettes. Etcheverry on the keep, and there's the ladder to Patterson. He's over in the corner for a touchdown. Al Patterson. And Montreal, Mr. Wonderful comes through for the Eastern champions who lead by a score of six to nothing. Following the interception by Bruce Coulter, the Alouettes traveled 45 yards in six plays. Three all six. Edmonton, no score. Bill Billy, number 80, will attempt the convert with Sam Etcheverry holding. The ball is down, and the kick is good. It was tick, but it's good, and the score, the Montreal Alouette, seven. Edmonton Eskimos, no score. And this, of course, is the first Grey Cup game featuring the six-point touchdown. The scoring play was the Lateral pass to Patterson, who went over unmolested in the corner. If it means anything, two years ago, Edmonton scored first in the Grey Cup game here. Last year in Vancouver, Montreal put the initial points on the scoreboard. 
Johnny Blacher, number 81, will kick off for Montreal from his own 45. Parker and Miles back inside their own 10. It's the short kick. It's picked up and dropped by uh, Johnny Bright. Finally plows forward. And that Montreal forward wall is really down and in there. Number 62, who plowed in that time, was Bob McClellan. The ball carried back to the 30. Kwong finally carried it as Bright was standing and looking at it for a moment or two. And the Eskimos come up over the ball. They trail 7 to nothing. Done. And off is to Parker, and Parker plows forward across the 35 to the 38-yard line of the Alouettes before being stopped by Doug McNichol. Number 74. Parker picked up almost eight yards. It's second and two. Don Getty, the quarterback, handoff is the first man, Bright, who piles through across his own 45-yard line for a first down for the Evan and Eskimos. Bruce Coulter moved up from his safety position to make the stop along with Bill Bewley, number 80. First and 10 for the Evan and Eskimos at their own 46-yard line. There is the pitch out to Bright, and Bright dives across the 50 to about the 53-yard line. Number 72, Jim Miller, was the man who got to him with a good low tackle. And you have to hit right low. He's an explosive type of runner, that charging fullback for the Edmonton team. Now Getty with a pitch out again to Bright. And Bright gets running room down across the 55-yard line for a first down for Edmonton. And the Eskimos are rolling a bit on the ground. In there right at the bottom of the pile was number 50, Art Walker, who threw a key block. The stop was made by Big Tom Hugo, the veteran center and inside linebacker of the Montreal Alouettes, along with Jim Miller, number 72. Montreal using the straight Ivy split T. It's Parker, pushed out of bounds. He danced across the 50 on one foot. Bill Bewley had a hold of him. Parker picked up. Give him three yards. It'll be second and seven for the Edmonton Eskimos who have the ball inside Montreal territory. Alouette's leading seven to nothing. The touchdown by Hal Patterson. Now they flank Parker out to the left and Getty's going to throw for the first time. He's rushed. The screen, it was meant for Roly Miles who was charged in there by Juan Sheridan. Big number 64, Getty's first pass attempt. He got the defenders in, but he couldn't get Roly Miles sprung loose. Carpuck and Pal, the deep men, Doing the booting is Jackie Parker from his own 50. He gets away a short spiral that goes out of bounds at the about the 17-yard line of the Montreal Alouettes who will take over there first and 10. And here's the score, Montreal 7. Edmonton, no score. Montreal first and 10. They mark that ball out at about the 27-yard line. Etcheverry with the handoff to James, who gets across the Montreal 30, a gain of about five yards. Make it four and a half. Second, five and a half yards to go. John Tatum made the tackle, number 42 for the Evan and Eskimos. There have been no substitutions from the original starting teams yet. Edmonton using a 5-4-3 now. Echeverry with the screen pass to Pascal, and Pascal is pulled down. A very fine tackle over there at the 35-yard line. Jackie Parker was in there very quickly, along with Roley Miles. There's a gain of no more than a yard. It's third down, and the Montreal team will kick from just inside their own 35-yard line. Etcheverry standing back at his own 20. 
the Edmonton deep men at their own 37-yard line. There's the kick. Echeverry gets away his best kick of the day. It's taken by Miles at the 40, and Miles is met head-on by Jim Miller, number 72, and he went not one inch farther. You may have noticed Miles slipping a bit. It is a little greasy out there now. Echeverry's kick traveled 37 yards from the point at which the ball was scrimmaged. And uh, there's not been a really brilliant kick in this football game yet. Al's leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Now the pitch out from Getty is to uh, the China Clipper. He got nowhere as number 77, Tommy Moran, came in to put the stop on him. Gain of perhaps a yard, no more. It's second and nine for the Edmonton Eskimos who have been defensed very well by this Montreal team so far in this game this afternoon. Now Getty is going back to throw again. It's the long pass complete to the 50-yard line of the Montreal Alouette. Bill Walker. Offensive right end. Cut in to take that pass and it's first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos. Don Getty with his back to you, number 87, the youngster from Western, calling the plays and completing that long pass. Now it's the handoff on the reverse to the left, Rolly Miles, and he's pushed out of bounds on the 40. That's the counter play on the split D. And Edmonton has not tried anything fancy, really, in that backfield so far. Some people... But funnily enough, mostly people from the east were predicting they might try something. The ball is at the 41. It's second and four. Getty's handoff is to the first man. And the ball is moved to the 35-yard line. It's enough for a first down. Johnny Bright bowled through to the 35 where it's first and 10 for the Eskimos who are threatening for the first time in the game. Big Billy Ship. Number 68, who's been devastating in there so far today, was the man who put the stop on him. Getty's handoff was to the first man, Kwong, and Kwong moves down across the 30 to about the 28, closer to the 27-yard line before being stopped by Bill Buley, number 80. Second and three for the Eskimos, and Getty has them moving on the ground. Now Getty's handoff is to the second man. Carpark came in to put the stop on Jackie Parker. Jackie Parker. I suppose if you turn Parker around, you get Carpark out of it almost. It's first and ten with five minutes remaining in the first quarter. The Eskimos first and ten inside the Montreal Alouette 25-yard line. And Don Getty has the white and gold and green from Edmonton moving. Now it's Getty faking the handoff. He gets good protection. There's the long pass just over the outstretched arms of Bill Rokamp away down in the end zone. And Rokamp got in there very neatly, but Getty threw it over him a little bit. And Colder was in there very quickly covering. So those who predicted that we might see quite a bit of passing from Getty may be right. Eskimos trailing, of course, in this first quarter. They want to get back. It's the fake handoff and the pitch out to Parker. Parker with the lateral to Miles. Miles across the 20. Rolls forward before moving out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. There's another classic play from the split T formation. About the 17-yard line. It's third and three. They're going to go for it. They come out in running formation. Getty gives it to the payoff man, Kwong, who spins down across the 15, and it looks as though he has the first down. We'll wait till they unfile. First down for the Evan and Eskimos. Big one, Sherrod, number 64. Got Kwong, but he couldn't get him quite quickly enough. No 
Army Kwong, who so far in his career has scored 20 points in Grey Cup games. There's a handoff to Miles who finds a hole, moves down across the five-yard line. Rolly Miles cutting across from the right, moved to the four-yard line before being stopped again by Bruce Coulter, who has been playing a fine defensive game for Montreal. So it's second down and three to go. Four for a touchdown, right across. Johnny Bright over for an Edmonton Eskimo touchdown. Johnny Bright taking the handoff from Don Getty. Pulled his way across left tackle, and the score is Montreal Alouette 7, the Edmonton Eskimos 6. Joe Mobra, number 77, will attempt the conversion. Just under four minutes, unofficially, remaining in the first quarter. We give you that time unofficially as the official time is kept on the field. Don Getty will hold number 87. Joe Mobra, number 77, will kick. The ball is down. The kick is no good it's wide to the left and the score remains Montreal Alouette 7 the Eminent Eskimos 6 the Eskimos went 68 yards in 11 plays the long gain of course came off Getty's pass to Bill Walker so there's a one-point spread. As we approach the end of the first quarter of what so far has been a very well-played Grey Cup game under ideal conditions. The middle of the field is perhaps a little greasy, but there's been not too much slipping. Miles a couple of times has slipped a little bit on receiving kicks. Pal Patterson and Dub James are your deep men. The kick off for Edmonton by Mobra from the 45. He slants it across to Joey Powell, and again it goes out of bounds, as occurred in the opening kickoff, and again they'll take it back 10 yards. They're trying to keep that ball away from Patterson. Trying to slant that ball away from the always dangerous Hal Patterson. Twice now, Mobra has kicked it a little too far wide and there for the benefit of Vancouver fans if you happen to hear a trumpet is a Vancouver trumpet blowing just down below us under a very wide sombrero Mobra kicking this time from his 35 and he gets it away a short kick it's coming to James at his own 30 James finding running room gets a good block and then it's met head on up full like charge Boy, he was snowed under hard down there. And the first man in was Bill Briggs, the big Edmonton defensive star, a veteran of the club. And the Eskies send in their defensive team. The Montreal Alouettes have the football first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Etcheverry has two men flanked wide to the right. His handoff is to a Bruzy. Bruzy finds a hole over left tackle and gets down across his own 50-yard line. A big gain again by Pat Abruzzi. Number 64, Mike Vulcan came in to put the stop on him. First down for the Montreal Alouettes. At their own 52. And... It was supposed to be the aerial attack against the ground attack. Well, Edmonton has shown the ground attack, but so has Montreal. When Abruzzi has had that ball, he has rambled. Abruzzi, who had a very disappointing Grey Cup game last year, is certainly showing signs of making up for all that. Again, two men flank very wide to the right. There's the jump pass. Down to the 47. To Red O'Quinn. The little pro pass. Right over the line of scrimmage. Taken by Red O'Quinn at the 46-yard line. He was stopped by Oscar Kruger. It's another first down for the Alouette at the Edmonton 46-yard line. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter. There's the indication from the referee to the benches. They're immediately below us. Montreal just to our right, Edmonton just to our left. 
We're right over the Edmonton 50-yard line. Edmonton defending the north end to our left. There's the pass knocked down. It was meant for Patterson that time. But charging in was his opposing number 75, Bill Walker. And it's second and ten. Steve has just pointed out to me that Etcheverry has not completed he's completed one in five which is indeed a rarity for Sam Etcheverry. Now he's going to throw again. He does. It's caught by Patterson at the 36 and he moves across the 35. He's thrown back but advanced the ball to about the 33 yard line of the Edmonton Eskimos before being stopped by Joe Mobra. Number 77. Joey Powell is flanked wide to the right. James on this side. Abruzzi on the fullback draw gets across the 30 to the 33 yard line, the, rather the 27 yard line. Make it the 28. It's second and five. The stop was made by John Tatum. Montreal Alouettes leading the Ebenezer Eskimo seven to six late in the first quarter. Powell again, number 82, flanks wide to the right. James on this near side. And Echeverry is going back to throw. He gets good protection. The pass is grabbed by Powell and then dropped. He was hit hard by John Tatum. Number 42, the Edmonton Eskimo left inside linebacker who rocked Powell and the pass goes incomplete. It's third and five at the 28-yard line of the Eskimo. Two minutes remaining now, a little less than two minutes on the unofficial scoreboard clock in the first quarter. James is wide to the left again. Powell to the right. Echeverry is going to throw. It's in the ground. It was meant for Patterson, but Patterson either cut in just a shade late or Echeverry figured he had to throw a little too early. But Patterson was not there when the ball was. So the Montreal Alouettes lose the ball on downs. And the Everton Eskimos, who trail them 7-6 to six late in the first quarter, take over first and 10 at their own 28. Five-yard penalty. Getty calling signals. There's that, Montre that Everton long count. And they pulled about five Montreal Alouettes offside. I think the Edmonton team was offside as well. They were both offside, the official indicates. Edmonton will use that long count. Both teams were offside that time, so it didn't work. Big number 60 will bow through first for Montreal is Tex Colder. Now Getty with the quick count. The handoff, and the ball is moved across the Edmonton 35-yard line. A gain of about four yards by Roley Miles, number 98. Tex Colder, number 60, and... McNichol in to put the stop on him. We heard that Montreal might use two middle guards more or less and they do at times push that man up for a split six defense. There's Parker taking the pitch out and being rushed out of bounds at the 38 yard line and Parker for the Evanen team and Patterson of Montreal are both getting very very special attention from the defensive units on each side. When Patterson gets that ball, he's ganged, and the same is true for Jackie Parker. So the Evan and Eskimos are forced to kick again. Third down and six to go. They'll kick from their own 37-yard line. Carpuck and Pal are back, standing at their own 30, and this time it's Walker kicking. A high short kick taken at the 40 by Pal. He's being chased and is hauled down after getting just across his own 40-yard line. I think Frankie Anderson again was in there. That's the first time Walker has kicked in the game. Parker kicked the first two punts for the team from the West, and the minute flag is up in the first quarter. Montreal leading by a score of 7-6. The flag is up. Sam Echeverry will start the Alouettes moving again. From his own 43, Echeverry with the pitch out. 
to Pascal across the 50 to 55. And he finally hauled down, and for the first time in the game, a couple of the boys get a little animosity brewing, but it's nothing particularly serious, and Pascal rolls for the first down. Number 70, Ted Tully of the Edmonton Eskimos, along with Anderson, in to make the stop. It's first and ten for the Alouettes. That minute flag is still waving down there. Etcheverry rolls to the right. Good block. He's still going. Pitch out to James, and James puts his head down and plows to the 50. A gain of about four yards on the play. Make it three. It's second and seven. For the Montreal Alouettes, who again are inside Edmonton territory, they have it second down, seven to go at the Edmonton 50. Etcheverry calling signals. Flanker wide to the left. There's the pass. It was meant for James. He just couldn't reach it. And there's the gun to end the first quarter of the Grey Cup game. And the score, the Montreal Alouette, seven. The Edmonton Eskimos, six. The teams have changed ends. This time, Montreal will be to our left, defending the north end. The Edmonton Eskimos to our right at the south end of Varsity Stadium. And here to bring you the second quarter of what so far is a scintillating Grey Cup game, here is Steve Douglas. Right, Ted, the ball is on the 50-yard line, Edmonton end of the field. Mendrick and Miles are the two deep men. Sam Echeverry will boot from his own 50. It is third down, about eight yards to go. 7-6, the Alouettes. High floater taken by Miles at the 15-yard line. Running diagonally, Lateros to Mendrick at the 25-30, at the 40-yard line, pushed out of bounds on the 43-yard line. And Sam Echeverry, who did the kicking, went all the way across to the far side, the east side of Varsity Stadium, and pushed Mendrick out of bounds after he took the lateral from Raleigh Miles. 32-yard kick. As Ted pointed out, there hasn't been a mammoth boot all afternoon. As a matter of fact, I don't believe there's been one over 40 yards from the line of scrimmage. Edmonton's ball, first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Getty is quarterbacking. And off is a Johnny Bright, that quick burst that we were so familiar with last year in Vancouver. And how that big boy does move. Juan Sheridan, number 64 of the Alouettes, is one man in on that tackle. And Jack Dwyer, number 89. Dwyer playing left half defensively. 23 yards on that tremendous, sudden, powerful burst through the middle by big Johnny Bright, who scored the Eskies' only touchdown so far. Miles on the pitch out from Getty. Miles throwing. Intended for Parker. Intercepted and dropped by Hal Patterson. Well, there you had... The two top players so voted in the country this year up against each other on the pitch out to Raleigh Miles from quarterback Don Getty. Miles came about 10 or 15 yards toward these western sidelines, then hurled it down intended for Parker, and Patterson almost had the interception but couldn't hang on. Second down and 10 yards to go. The football is about 18 yards in from the far side of the field and is on the Alouette's 43-yard line, Edmonton possession. The cut is to Miles again, the pitch out from Miles to Parker, and Hal Patterson hits him low around the left ankle and helps drag him down. Doug McNichol came in, so did John Bleacher, and Bruce Calder, number 65. So the kicking team comes in for the Eskimos, and the Alouettes send their usual two deep men down. Joey Powell, number 82, and Pete Karpak on the left, number 91. There they are, about the five-yard line, but they'll go a bit deeper than that. Bill Walker is now kicking for Edmonton. Parker has until now. Here's Walker's boot from the 45. It is a honey, very high, to Karpak on the one. He is snowed under by about four tacklers on roughly the half-yard line.
That is the first kick that has exceeded 40 yards. Going roughly 45 yards where Pete took it on the one yard line and smothered under almost immediately. Alouettes huddling offensively in their own end zone, 10 yards in. Edmonton forward wall gets set about two yards from the Alouette goal line. Joey Pal is a flanker on this side. And the handoff drives across the five yard line. Comes up to about the seven, Bob Pascoe, number 86, the ball carrier. The stop is made for Edmonton, principally by Art Walker, number 50, who plays left tackle defensively. 7-6 is the count, Montreal over Edmonton. Patterson scored, Bewley converted. Wright scored for Edmonton, and Mobra missed the convert. Mr. Abruzzi was just plain, swarmed under, stopped just about the line of scrimmage, might have lost half a yard. About four men in the front of the Edmonton forward wall grabbed hold of him, made no mistake about it, and he got absolutely nowhere. Led by Frankie Morris, number 52, the middle guard. So it's third down and five yards to go. Miles and Mendrick are the deep men. If you can call deep the Montreal 40-yard line, that's where they're standing. Etcheverry booting is 10 yards in his own end zone. And Bill Walker in very fast, caused Sam for the second time this afternoon to get that ball off the side of his foot, and it traveled out only to the 31-yard line, where Edmonton takes possession, first and 10 on the Alouettes, 31. Varsity Stadium in Toronto is jam-packed this afternoon, and the weather, it's just about perfect. Getty quarterbacking. Second man, Jackie Parker, gets it, finds a nice hole off right tackle, and drives down. Bewley hit him first and upset him, and Bruce Calder completed the job, but Mr. Parker's gain is, oh, it's about nine and a half yards. It is less than a yard, short of a first down. Yet he's still quarterbacking. Johnny Bright picks up the necessary yardage off right guard, and his charge carried him to the 18-yard line, Edmonton, first and 10. Tommy Hugo talks up defensive signals for Montreal, number 48. Art Walker through a nice block that sprung Bright loose for the yardage necessary for that first down. Normie Kwong is the ball carrier across the 15 to about the 13-yard line. Piled up there. Blacher, number 81, is the first man to get him. Right inside linebacker for the Alouettes, John Blacher. The gain is a good five, maybe six yards. Ball on the 13, dead in front of the goalpost. Pitch out to Bright, cut back. He's across the 10, down to about the seven yard line, and man, there's a real big pileup. That should be a first down, but let's wait until they do one pile. So signaled by the referee. First down. Jimmy Miller led the defensive work for the Alouettes there, and Edmonton finds itself once again knocking on touchdown door. On the seven yard line, first and goal to go. They trail six points to seven. Parker is down to about the two-yard line, very close to the goal line. Jackie seemed to be stopped on about the two-yard line, but flung himself forward and can't be more than about half a yard. The ball put down on the one. So it is second down, and goal to go a yard out, and the Alouettes send in Tex Colder, number 60, and Charlie Gibbons, number 52, to strengthen the center of that line. Blacher comes out, and so does Colder. Alouettes will pack the forward wall. Ted Reynolds says it looks as though the Alouettes are going to play a 12-man line on this, and he's not very far wrong. The officials chasing photographers back out of the end zone. They had crept halfway in. Here's the picture just a yard from touchdown territory. Edmonton on the march. Getty quarterbacking on a sneak. The Edmonton Eskimos, the Grey Cup champions, move 
33 yards on just six plays for their second TD of the afternoon. Johnny Tatum, the Edmonton offensive center, made the block that enabled Don Getty, the quarterback, on the sneak to count the second TD of the day for the Eskies. The convert attempt by Joe Mubra, number 77. Getty holding. Joe missed the first one. High pass from center. It is no good. It goes to the right of the upright. And the score is Edmonton 12, Montreal 7. That is the second time this afternoon that Joe Mobra, a newcomer to the Eskies this year, has failed to boot the conversion. It is 12 to 7, and we have roughly 11 minutes left to go in the second quarter. Mobra on the kickoff. Pal, Patterson, and James, the Alouette's deep men, at the 10-yard line. Here we go. To Hal Patterson on the 6. At the 15, coming this way. At the 20. 25. Put his head down. Still going. And he is down on the 36-yard line. And at least four Eskimos hit him on the way between the 25 and the 36, where he was finally stopped principally by Mike King, number 55. 29-yard run back by Hal Patterson. For those of you in the West who have not seen this great football player in action on kickoff returns, that was a pretty fair indication. Edmonton employing a 5-4-3 defense against the Alouettes, who send Bob Pascoe very wide. And man, he got absolutely nowhere. There may have been a crisscross in signals. Bob James was the ball carrier, and he ran smack into the Reed Henderson, the big fellow, for the Edmonton Eskimos, number 65 at left tackle. Biggest man on the squad, 240-pounder. James is not so big. Mr. Echeverry back, throwing a wobbler to James. He's got it, a great catch on the 50-yard line. That is only the third completion for Echeverry this afternoon in 10 attempts, a far cry from the Grey Cup game last year when he completed 30 out of 39 for a new all-time record. And Mobra is the man who stopped Bob James right on the Alouette's 50-yard line, first and 10. And the stadium, particularly the Montreal side of it, begins to buzz again. Sam slips. The turf in midfield, it must be noted, is very definitely just a wee bit greasy, enough so that footing is sometimes a little bit delicate. Roger Nelson made sure that Sam didn't go any farther. Right tackle both ways for the Eskimos, number 66. Loss in the play is pretty close to three yards, second and 13. Pascal flanks to the far side. Joey Pal out here at the very back to throw it. A screen pass to Abruzzi. Beautiful shift by Abruzzi. Look at that one. He left that tackler, who was Oscar Kruger, just in his tracks, and finally is down on the 39-yard line. Key block thrown by Charlie Gibbons, number 52. That is a play the Alouettes have employed with great, great success this year, particularly with Abruzzi carrying. And his zigzag tactics there caught the Eskimos a wee bit flat-footed. Two flankers go out. The far man is James Pal inside. Pascal carries and nailed just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. His pickup may be a couple of yards, but no more. Roger Nelson, number 66. Here's the key man of three on the stop. And number 42, Johnny Tatum. Plays left inside linebacker defensively and is Edmonton's offensive center. A first-year man and a very good one. The gain is a little more than a yard. Let's make it second and about nine. Echeverry on the 45, looking and throwing very deep. Intended for Patterson. He's got it! That 
pass from Echeverry to Patterson traveled about 70 yards in the air, and that is one of the unbelievable catches that Prince Hal is able to make, and certainly does. Conversion by Bill Buley is good. Patterson got behind Oscar Kruger, the deep defensive man, and Oscar is wandering around in front of the goalpost, shaking his head, asking himself how that could happen as the scoreboard at Varsity Stadium with about nine minutes to go in the second quarter, shows 14-12 for Montreal. Well, there's no need to tell you the roar that went up. Ted Reynolds is shaking his head as well. He knows how Kruger feels. He doesn't believe it. Actually speaking, there are many of us who believe very firmly that Patterson, using a basketball tactic, deliberately tips the ball to get it out of the possible hands of an interceptor and then grabs onto it himself. It looked as if it might have been that way that time. Parker and Miles are the deep men for Edmonton. Johnny Blacher's kick to Parker at the 10, at the 25, up the middle, and he's across and finally down on about the 34-yard line in a big pileup. Bob McClellan, number 62, and Ted Elsby, 67. The two men who submarined on Parker and brought him down. Edmonton ball, first and 10, from their own 33-yard line. Don Getty quarterbacking. Johnny Bright on a fast handoff, hits right into the center of the line. Is across the 35. Jim Staten, number 63. Hobbling on an injured leg was the principal tackler. The pickup is three yards. It is second down and seven to go. Raleigh Miles goes flanking on the far side. Getty is back. Looks, throws down, and it is tipped by Tommy Hugo. Intended for Bill Walker. The offensive right end of the Eskimos. Hugo got his left hand up and just tipped it out of Walker's reach. The kicking team goes in for Edmonton. Carpuck and Pal, there they are, in for Montreal. 91, Carpuck, 82, Pal. Unofficially, there is eight minutes and 15 seconds to halftime. It is 14-12, Montreal. Two touchdowns, both converted. Two touchdowns for the Eskimos. Neither one made good. Parker kicking from about his 25. Goes out of bounds and the officials line it up and they say on the Alouette's 52-yard line. This is something we haven't pointed out before. Jackie Parker is wearing very thin, light gloves this afternoon. He is the only man on the field so doing. Montreal ball, first and ten. The football is 15 yards in from the far eastern sideline. Edmonton employing a 5-4-3 defense against the Alouettes right now. Pitch out comes to Pat Abruzzi. Nice block springs him loose. O'Quinn through the block. Look at that switch by Abruzzi again. And he drives down across the Edmonton 50-yard line. is much shiftier in this ball game than we've seen him all year here in the East. Art Walker, number 50, principal man who dragged him down. And that Walker is a great ball player for Edmonton. Bob Pascal pulls his way down and the whistle had blown. He lost control of the football. But the whistle had blown. He got a first down on the 45-yard line. Frankie Anderson, left guard of Edmonton, number 51, the man who got him. And Anderson is very slow getting up. Anderson wears a special corset from his hip right to his shoulder. Etcheverry back. Throwing deep again, and in the clear is 
Pascal, who loses the ball. It's recovered by Edmonton, and they scramble for it on the 25-yard line. Edmonton possession. Oscar Kruger is the man who recovered for Edmonton right on their 25-yard line and 15 yards in from the far side. Seven minutes unofficially to halftime, 14-12, Montreal. That is the first fumble of the ball game. Getty quarterbacking. Driving into the right side, the left side of his own line, the ball carrier, Normie Kwong, picked up maybe two yards, just about. Montreal's line and their defense close to the line is shifting. They were employing almost a nine-man line on that last play. Now they're in about an 8-4. There's a marker on this play. The ball carrier is Rolly Miles, and the tackle is made by number 77, Tommy Moran. The Eskimos are offside on it. There is the signal. Edmonton offside. It is declined by the Alouettes. The referee today is Harry Bowden of Toronto. The three umpires, Norm Crichton of Hamilton, Bill Nairn and Cliff Roseborough of Winnipeg, field judge Paul Dojak of Regina, head linesman Bob Lye of Hamilton. Carpuck and Pal at their own 35-yard line. And let's see who'll boot this time. It's Jackie Parker standing on his 15. A poor kick landing at midfield taken by Carpock, and he is filled at midfield. So the Alouettes will take possession there. First and ten. The score, Montreal, 14, Edmonton, 12. Sam has still got the football. Lateral goes out to Pascal. He is nailed by Bill Rokamp on a honey of a tackle. Rokamp broke through after Etcheberry had lateral to Bob Pascal, and the loss in the play is roughly two yards. So it is second down and 12. And the football is down exactly on the 52-yard line. Varsity Stadium for this Grey Cup game this year is marked off. 15 yards in from each sideline, each yard all the way through the 110 of the gridiron. Etcheverry looking, throwing a bullet-like pass intended for Joey Powell, and it was tipped out there. Tatum, number 42, and Bob Kimoff, number 80, was also right in on top of it. So the Alouettes come up with a punting situation. And number 73, Steve Mendrick, and number 98, Raleigh Miles, are the receivers set up by Edmonton. Kimoff is playing defense in place of the injured Earl Lindley. Sam boots a floater close to the sideline, and stepping out is Steve Mendrick on the 26-yard line. Ted, I know that out west, Fellows like Earl Lindley, Gino Frakis, particularly, are very anxious about the result of this ball game. Two Edmonton players who are not with the club in the big one that they would love to play in most. We certainly send along our regrets that they can't be participating along with their fine teammates, and we certainly hope they enjoy the television coverage of the Grey Cup here in Toronto. Pitch out is by Getty to Raleigh Miles. Look at that little boy scamper. And he is dumped down on the 37-yard line. And it was actually a block that Hal Patterson threw at his feet. It is a first down, Miles picking it up. Raleigh Miles is listed in the programs as weighing 175. That is a little doubtful. He may not be that big. Johnny Bright on a fast direct handoff. Hits into right tackle on his own line. 
And is up to the 40-yard line, a pickup of maybe three. We are very close to the five-minute mark to the end of the second quarter. Officials are having a little trouble. It looks like a tag team wrestling match out there with all participants in the ring at the same time. Arms and legs just sort of tangled up. There's the five-minute signal right now. Alouette's in front by two points, 14 to 12. Pitch out to Parker from Getty. Look at that boy go. Pitch out to Miles at the 40, 45, 50, out of bounds. On the 53-yard line, pushed out by Jimmy Miller. Defensive left end for Montreal. And somebody could have been racked up just a little bit on that play on the far side. That Miles is a real scooter. Ted points out one perhaps oddity about Miles. He almost always carries the ball with two hands. Edmonton being penalized for rough play. There's Harry Bowden's signal. Back to the 40-yard line. It is first down for Edmonton on their own 40-yard line. Miles had gone out of bounds on the 53. Johnny Bright, the ball carrier on a bruising run up the center, picks up uh, nine yards. It is second down and a little more than one yard left to go. Normie Kwong, number 85. And a marker goes down for piling by one of the defensive players in the Montreal Alouettes. The official standing right over the situation. Caught the infraction, and the marker went down on the field. That moves the ball on the roughing penalty. Down to the Montreal 42-yard line, Tommy Hugo having a conversation with referee Harry Bowden about the call. Getty has still got it, firing out intended for Miles way over his head. And the man diving for it was Jack Dwyer, number 89 of the Montreal Alouettes. Plays defensive left halfback. Don Getty pulling right back, looking and throwing very deep down, intended for Miles. It is intercepted. Bruce Calder grabbed it on the eight, got up, and advanced it back to the 17-yard line. And Miles, who was the intended receiver, came back and grabbed Calder and brought him down. Tommy Moran and Bruce Calder running off together right there. Only two interceptions today. Both have been by Bruce Coulter, who hasn't been used too much this year, perhaps. Etcheverry throwing a wobbler. Intercepted by Tully. He's back to the 25 and spins around to the 23-yard line where Trowick makes sure he is stopped. And who hit him first was Tommy Hugo. Frank Anderson, who is noted as Doug McNichol is here in the East for his ability at rushing a passer, was in very fast on Sam, and Etcheverry threw an unusual wobbler. And Tully, number 70 for Edmonton. Johnny on the spot for the interception. Number three of the game. Edmonton's ball, first and 10 on the Alouette 24-yard line, about three minutes to go. A marker on this play. Right the ball carrier, high into the air. The Eskimos offside.
A check between the officials on the calling of the play. Harry Bowden is consulting with Tommy Hugo, acting captain of the Alouettes. And here's the Markov. Back to the 29-yard line, and the signal offside against Edmonton. Alouettes are in front by two points, 14 to 12, on the strength of two missed conversions by the Eskies. The play moving this way, the pitch out to Miles, he juggled it, hang on. Cuts back nicely to the 25-yard line. Stopped by Tom Hugo, number 48, first man to hit him. Reed Henderson threw the nice block in the backfield that enabled him to get down almost to the 25. Three-minute signal just given from the field. Incidentally, there is fine entertainment lined up here at halftime for you, so don't go too far away from your television set. Doug Maxwell, Ted Reynolds, and yours truly will be discussing what has happened. And from Eddie Fitkin's fine statistics, we'll keep you up to date on facts and figures, too. Normie Kwong with Getty hiding the ball beautifully and holding it to the last split second. Kwong hits through a hole between guard and tackle on the right side and is down on the 21-yard line by Jimmy Miller and Tom Hugo. Mobra is coming in. This may be for a field goal attempt by the Eskimos. Joe Mobra, number 77, left hand offensively, has missed both conversions today. This would be a chance to really get those misses back if he could boot a field goal, but he's coming back off the field now. There's a possibility, too, that Jackie Parker could try a field goal. The ball is dead in front of the uprights. Third down and about eight to go. This is going to be it. Parker will try it. The ball will be down on the 28-yard line. High pass. No good. Patterson in there. Brings it out to the five. And down. A nice tackle on the six-yard line. Jimmy Shipka, number 83, is the man who got Hal Patterson. And the Eskimos are having rough luck so far today in so far as trying to get the football over the crossbar and between the uprights. The Alouettes have it first and 10 on their own six-yard line. It's 15 yards in, as you can see, where those markers are from these western sidelines. Two minutes and about 20 seconds unofficially left to go to the half. Etcheverry throwing very long. And Jennifer Patterson and he and Rokamp were in there and they're calling interference on Bill Rokamp, who doesn't like the call. Etcheverry threw that football approximately 40 yards. And on the interference call that referee Bowden is giving you right now, Rokamp is the culprit. It gives Alouettes the first down on their 40-yard line and certainly takes a whale of a lot of pressure off them for they were deep in their own territory on the sixth when they started. Echeverry still got it. Anderson put the rush on him, but he ducked him. A long one for Pal. Almost completed. Parker almost had an interception as well. Very good guarding by Jackie Parker on Joey Powell. On pass defense for Edmonton, Jackie Parker probably covers more ground than any other football player on the field with the exception of his eastern counterpart, Hal Patterson. He floats all over the place. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the Alouette's 40-yard line. A minute, 45 seconds left. 14-12, Montreal. Echeverry will throw again. Anderson after him again. He threw a, a screen pass out here, intended for a bruise, but threw it about two yards behind him. And checking very closely on a bruise was Reed Henderson, number 65, and Bob Kimoff, number 80. Yeah. 
Etcheverry on his 26-yard line. Mendrick and Miles deep for Edmonton. High spiral. Mendrick on the 27-yard line. Starts for the far side. Is hit by Doug McNichol with a flying block that knocks him to the earth on the 32. And Gibbons, number 52, made sure he stayed there. And Mendrick is shaken up but good on that play. Roughly one minute and 20 seconds to halftime, 14-12, Montreal. Mendrick, number 73, used as a left half defensively and as a punt receiver, was hit a tremendous flying block by big Doug McNichol, who only goes, I'd say, Hal, about uh, 245 or 50 at least on six feet four. So when he hits you, you really feel it. Steve coming off under his own steam. Number 71, Steve Bendiak, going in for Edmonton. Eskies have the ball, first and 10, from their own 32 and a half yard line. Getty quarterbacking. Pitch out is to Miles. Miles out to Parker. He's at the 45 yard line. And there's going to be a roughing penalty called here against Montreal. It will be the second time the same type of penalty has been called for unnecessary piling on. Hal Patterson made the stop and the officials begin the march downfield. This time Juan Sheridan acting captain along with Tom Hugo is talking to referee Harry Bowden about it. Sheridan takes his helmet off, still has a few words to say. Eskimos ready to go offensively. Sheridan isn't ready. He's still talking to the officials. All right. The minute flag has just gone up on the sidelines. Pass completed from Gehi to Miles. He gets away from the first man. And Buley came in from behind to drag him down. Eskimos on the march again. It's a first down on the 30-yard line. 15 yards in from the far side. The time is less than 60 seconds. Johnny Bright at a big hole opens up and man does he go. He's all the way down to the 13 yard line. One of the Yellowettes hurt in the play, getting up all right. Six feet one, 215 pounds. Johnny Bright, when he moves remarkably fast, carries a powerful wallet. First and 10 on the 14 yard line, Bright again. Stops under approximately the nine. There can't be too much time left. The clock here at Varsity Stadium shows no time remaining. It stops actually at the minute mark. And that flag has been up. The ball is on the 10-yard line. A great chance for Edmonton to move ahead at halftime here if they can do it. Getty throwing. Completed to Parker for a touchdown. Jackie Parker took that just about a yard out in the middle of Bruce Coulter, Hal Patterson, and Tommy Moran and spun himself into the end zone. We'll see what Mr. Mobra can do this time. It is 18 to 14 Edmonton. Can he make it 19? He does. And so as time is just about up at the end of the first half, it is Edmonton 19, Montreal 14. As the gun sounds to end the first half with the score, the Edmonton Eskimos 19, the Montreal Alouettes 14. What the 
Back in Varsity Stadium in Toronto on November the 24th, 1956, Grey Cup Day. At halftime, the score reading 19 for the Edmonton Eskimos, 14 for the Montreal Alouettes, and a real widescreen production underway on the field at the present time with drum majorettes, the 48th Highlanders, and the choir of St. Michael's Boys School as they advance across your screen right into your living room from one coast to the other. The weather continues to amaze everybody, I think, Doug. Certainly those on the eastern stands at Varsity Stadium are bathing in beautiful sunshine, and although the temperature is close to 30 degrees, they couldn't ask for better football weather from either a spectator's standpoint or that of the players. Everything is just about letter perfect. We've had a great ball game for the first half, 19 to 14, the champions defending their title so far successfully with a five-point margin. What's coming up in the second half is anybody's guess, but I think you said it best that anything can happen in Grey Cup football, and believe me, it probably will. And the Edmonton Eskimos now make their appearance on the field. One of the things that has impressed me about the Eskimos, seeing them for the first time this year, takes you back to the late 1930s when Lou Heyman was coaching the Toronto Argonauts, and one of their outstanding plays was that famous three-man end run started by, usually, Bill Stukas. Well, this afternoon, we've had that same hot potato ball handling between such stalwarts as Getty, Miles, Kwong, and Parker, and some very fine running by both teams. But now, as they come onto the field, ready for this second half of the 1956 Grey Cup, here's Ted Reynolds. Johnny Blacher, number 81, puts the ball down on his own 45-yard line and will kick it for the Montreal Alouettes, who are defending the south end of Varsity Stadium. To our right, the Edmonton Eskimos, whose white uniforms are a little tarnished now, send back Roly Miles and Jackie Parker. No, Kruger is going back. Kruger was shaken up a little late in that second quarter when that gigantic McNichol hit him, but he seems to be all right. The middlemen are Kwong and uh, number 84, Johnny Bright. Blacher approaches the ball. He puts it. It goes down between Kwong and Bright. Miles can't reach it. Finally picks it up, doing a little faking with Kruger, and he got back no place. Kruger was going backwards, which is rather a dangerous way to start throwing blocks. And Miles got no place as far as the run back is concerned. Martinello, number 54, was down quickly under Blacher's kick. Both these clubs get down the field very fast under those kicks. Now it's Eskies, first and ten. Getty, the quarterback, and his handoff is to Bright. Fumble, we'll have to wait and see. It's a Montreal recovery, and there's a big break for the Alouettes here in the first seconds of the second half. Big Tom Hugo was the man who got on that football. Montreal players shaken up on the play. Rolling and getting to his feet. I think it's O'Quinn. No, Staten. Jim Staten. Big fella who's playing on a very bad foot, but he runs off the field. So here's a break for the Alouettes. They have the ball first and ten at the Edmonton 12-yard line. Straight tight T formation, Echeverry's handoff is to Pascal, and he moves ahead, gaining about two yards. Correction, make it four yards. They're calling it five. It's about four and a half, five yards. The stop was made by Frankie Morris, number 52, the big veteran middle guard. Second down, Echeverry calling signal. Gives it to Abruzzi. Abruzzi finds a hole, cracks over across the five-yard line. And Abruzzi who ran so brilliantly at the first down. Abruzzi who ran so brilliantly in that first quarter has thundered the Montreal Alouettes to a goal, first down, goal to go situation. They flank one man wide. There's Abruzzi pushed back. He got a little forward motion, then was pushed back by Bob Kimma. The defensive linebacker, 
on the left side. So it's second goal for Montreal Alouettes. They trail 19 to 14. Echeverry, they pitch out this time. And James tracks to the goal line, but he didn't get over. James found a good hole, got to the goal line, and then Steve Bendiak came in and pushed him back. And Tully, number 70, 71 is Bendiak. And getting up off the bottom of the pile is big Mike Kometch. So it's third down. And we'll say a yard, give or take a few inches. Echeverry on the keep. He's over for the touchdown. Sam Echeverry. Pulled over as that big Montreal line steamed into the Edmonton end zone. And the Edmonton club now trails by one point again as Montreal goes in front 20-19. Ted Elsby, who's been a key man on that front wall for Montreal today, led the way across for Echeverry on the quarterback sneak for Montreal's third touchdown. Here is the conversion. It is no good. Wide to the left, and the score remains 20 to 19. Following the recovery, the Owls went five plays, all on the ground, and it was climaxed with Echeverry moving over on a quarterback sneak to make it 2019. <coughs> Bill Bewley, Canadian lad, missed the conversion attempt and none of the kicking in this afternoon's game so far by either side has been particularly spectacular. Neither the punting nor the field goal conversion attempts, for that matter, the kickoffs have not been too bright yet either. Bewley will do the kicking from his 45. Miles and Kruger. Deep men for Edmonton. Bewley comes up to the ball. He gets away a short one. On that far side, it's picked up and brought back across the 42-yard line by Mobra. Mobra and Kwong patrol the middle area on those kickoffs. Mobra got back to the 42-yard line of the Edmonton Eskimos, where it's Eski first and 10. Tatum leads them up over that ball. There's the handoff to Parker, almost fumbled. He got a good block, gets some running room, shakes off another tackler, still going, and is finally piled up after getting across his own 50-yard line. Number 77, Tom Moran finally got to him. But Parker swivel hipped his way up across his own 50 yard line where it's second and inches to go for a first down for the Eskimos. Getty the quarterback. Getty gives it to Kwong who piles into the line and seems to have enough. We'll wait. Yes, first down for the Evan and Eskimos. Normie Kwong who's not had the football too often this afternoon but now on three occasions has got those payoff yards when a first down was so highly important. 20 to 19, the Alouettes leading the Eskimos early in the second half at Varsity Stadium. Getty this time keeps. Getty finds a hole. Rambles to the 45. Is finally brought down. That's the first time the youngster has run with the ball. It's a first down. And he caught the Montreal defenders flat-footed. And the... Secondary defenders had to come up and put the stop. Ruth Colder, number 65, finally came up to stop Getty. First and 10 again. There's a handoff to Bright, and Bright pulls his way to the 35, plows forward on his face, almost to the 30-yard line. Johnny Bright, another first down for the Evan and Eskimos. Tex Colder, number 60, came in to stop him. Colorful Varsity Stadium, gay with many Canadian colors on a lovely day for the Grey Cup game. There's the pitch out to Jackie Parker, his lateral, and getting no place with it is Roley Miles. He lost about six yards, seven yards on the play, as that time the end-around run did not work. 
They were looking for it. And Bill Bewley came in to throw Roly Miles for a lengthy loss. It's second and 17. This time they send Miles flanking wide to the left. Getty fakes, gives the ball to Bright. He whirls and is down. There's a fumble and Getty came in to recover. And fumbles have been very rare in this game. That one was recovered by the Eskimos. That was the, what they call the belly series. Only he gave the ball to Bright. Bright smacked into the right side of the Montreal line. It was hit very hard. The ball spurted out of his hand, but Getty was very alert to recover. So it's a third down situation. Carpock and Pal are back deep, almost at their own goal line. Carpock stands right between the goal posts at the south end of the field. There's an injured Alouette player. It's their big center, veteran Tom Hugo. There he is, being assisted off the field. And it would appear to be his left leg. Bob McClellan. Number 62. Bob McClellan, number 62, goes in to take his place on defense as a linebacker, the offensive center. And the Eskimos must kick on this third down situation. Parker's kick is coming from the 55. He gets away a long, long spiral, the best kick of the day. And Pal lets it fall behind him, and it rolls. And Pal was beaten to the ball by a player about 10 years old. Came out of no place and stole it. 50 yards through the air from the line of scrimmage for the single point. And that makes the score 20 to 20. Montreal 20 and Edmonton 20. That is certainly by far the best kick of the day. A perfect spiral. And Pal was a long way from home when he went back to field that one. 20 to 20, Edmonton and Montreal here early in the third quarter. Now it's Eskimos taking, the uh, Alouette brother taking over first and 10 at the 25. And it's James finds a little hole at the Edmonton left tackle and gets up for a gain of about five. Make it four at second and six. Stop was made by Frankie Anderson. He's so crippled he can hardly stand up straight, but he's still in on about 70% of the tackles. Now a flanker wide. Pasco, and it's the screen pass to Patterson. He rolled out of bounds as he was running on his knees the last couple of yards at the 30-yard line. There's little or no gain. And it's a kicking situation for the Montreal Alouettes. Alouettes have to kick on third down with about three and a half yards to go. And Echeverry stands back at his own 17-yard line, well behind the line of scrimmage. The receiver's at the 45. Echeverry gets away a pretty good one, very high. Being fielded by Kruger's drop. He grabs it again. And the Evan Eskimos take over there. First and ten. And here's the score. Montreal 20. Edmonton 20. Edmonton first and ten. Getty is the quarterback. Getty's hand off to Kwong who finds running room. Spins up across the 50 to the 45-yard line of the Montreal Alouette for his biggest gain of the day. First and ten there for the Edmonton Eskimos as they shook Kwong loose that time. And Kwong showed that he too can swivel a bit if he has to. Tackle was made by Moran after a 22-yard ramble by Normie Kwong. Now Miles is flanked to the right. The handoff is to the second man, Bright, who pulls through across to the 40-yard line, a gain of about five. 20 to 20 is the score. On the long single scored by Edmonton on the best kick of the day. So it's second down 
A little less than five yards to go for the Evan and Eskimos. This time Parker is flanked wide to the right. Getty fakes the handoff. Getty being rushed by Colder, trying to get away, and he's wrestled to the ground. Back at the 45-yard line. A loss of about five yards, and it'll be third and ten for Edmonton, and the Eskies will have to kick. Big Tex Colder, number 60, certainly put the rush on Getty that time, as the Alouettes were not fooled for a minute. On the fake handoff. They'll scrimmage the ball at the Montreal 45. The kick will be taken by Jackie Parker from just on his own side of midfield. Parker with gloves on, gets it, gets the boot away. This one is not as long as the last one. It's fielded by Powell, who dropped the ball. And there's a big pileup, and the Edmonton Eskimos take over the football at the Montreal 20-yard line. Seem to be Mike Vulcan. Vulcan or Johnny Bright. Hagan Bright, who got down and recovered. That fumble as Powell fielded the ball at his own 18, and it was jarred out of his hands, and the Eskimos recover and now have a golden opportunity. There's the handoff. To Kwong, the first man through, who gets across the line of scrimmage before being tackled by Juan Sheridan. And here is the attendance at Varsity Stadium this afternoon. A new record for this stadium, 27,425. That is a new record for this stadium. He'll go back in the ball game. There's Bright finding room. He gets a hole. Bright's still going. He dives. He's over for the touchdown. Johnny Bright. Bright went over Patterson like he wasn't in the park. And then he just pulled his way by Doug McNichol as about 500 pounds collided together. And the Edmonton Eskimos lead 26 to 20 in the third quarter. Conversion attempt coming up. Here it is. And the kick is good. The score. The Montreal Alouettes 20. The Edmonton Eskimos 27. That one split the uprights. 27 to 20, we're in the third quarter, and there's a British Columbia trumpet blowing down below us. <laughs> Eskimos will kick off to the Alouette to drop Pal, Patterson, and James back at their own 10 yard line. Patterson in the middle. So we'll see if Joe Mobra, number 77, who does the kicking for the Edmonton team, will try and slant the ball away from Mr. Patterson, who's in the middle of the picture. He has tried twice and been unsuccessful, kicking out of bounds on both occasions. Here it comes. It's a low spinning kick that gets by one man, is finally picked up by Powell. Powell tried to the left, finds a little room to the right, and is finally pushed out of bounds across the 40-yard line. He got up to the 43-yard line, and it's there that the Alouettes will take over first and 10. They trail 27 to 20. The Eskimos send in their defensive unit with Ted Tully, number 70, calling the defensive signals. Echeverry. Sends Joey Powell flanked to the left. Hatchaberry spins, hangs on. He's going to throw a little short pass. And then dropped by Red O'Quinn down at the 47-yard line of the Evan and Eskimos. He appeared to have it, but he could not hang on to it. He had to cut in a little farther than he was ready to. He turned just a shade too quickly and then had to move to get that ball. And he just couldn't hang on to it. 
Edmonton in a 5-4 defense. Pal again flanked to the left. Echeverry is going to pass, and it's grabbed, intercepted by Roly Miles, who gets back across the 50 to the Edmonton Montreal 45 yard line. And Echeverry was in there, number 92, along with number 50, 67, Ted Elsby, who put the stop on the elusive little Edmontonian who was all alone when he intercepted that pass. Something went wrong on the pass pattern. So, again, the Eskimos from Edmonton make themselves a break. They lead 27 to 20. It's been a hard-hitting and exciting football game all the way. There's Getty faking the handoff. There's a marker on the play. The pass to Miles grabbed and then dropped. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 27 to 20. Montreal players fell all over the ball, but it was an incompleted pass, and there was a marker. There have been very few markers, penalties in this game. The officials are Harry Bowden of Toronto, the umpire. Norm Crichton and Bill Nairn and Cliff Rosebury, the umpires. Bowden is the referee. Paul Dojak's the field judge. And the headlinesman is Bob Lye of Hamilton. Montreal offside. So it's first down. Now five yards to go for the Evan and Eskimos at the Montreal 40. Getty's handoff is to the first man. Quang finds running room and gets up across the 35-yard line. It's very close to a first down. It is a first down for the Eskimos. Tom Hugo, who's back in, he was assisted off the field just minutes ago, but you can't keep these fellas out of a game like this. Hugo's back in. He made the stop. Now Parker flanks very wide to the right for the Eskies. Getty gives the ball to Kwong, and Kwong runs into a melee of red jerseys down there that allowed him a pickup of about three yards. Mr. 5x5 five five did not quite get his length that time, so it's second and seven. One Sheridan was the man there to stop Normie Kwong. Second and seven for the Evan and Eskimos. They lead 27 to 20, midway through the third quarter. Getty calling the signals for Edmonton. He gives it to Parker after the fake to Kwong. Parker shook off one man, and he's finally wrestled out of bounds by Hugo. But he drifted by the first defender like he wasn't even in the park. He gives her that little shuffle and sort of sidesteps to his right. Another first down for the Evan and Eskimos. Montreal setting their defense. There's the Edmonton huddle. As the Esks come up over that ball, Tatum at center. Getty calling the plays. There's Bright moving to the left. And the handoff was to Normie Kwong, the fullback. He made maybe a yard no more. The stop was made by Tom Hugo, number 48 again. And for a man who was just assisted off the field a few moments ago, Hugo is a very busy gentleman out there in that Montreal line. The Owls moved those linebackers up so they're playing almost an eight, a seven-man line. They call it a split six, actually. Getty handoff is to Johnny Bright. He rolled across the Montreal 20-yard line where it'll be third down for the Eskimos. Six yards to go. They're in at a fair angle, so there may be a field goal attempt. Mobra is coming out, so it looks as though there'll be a field goal attempt. The other field goal attempt in the first half was by Parker, and it was wide. But Mobra seems to have found the range a little bit since the first quarter, and he will try it kicking from the 25-yard line with Don Getty holding. Getty puts it down. The kick is up in the air. It's good. Three points. Three points for the Edmonton to make the score 30-20. That's the score. Edmonton 30, Montreal 20. Edmund and Eskimos 30, Montreal Alouettes 20 as the Alouettes take over. There's a Bruzy spinning up to the 40 for a gain of about five yards. 
And the Alouettes now, with six minutes remaining in the third quarter, face a ten-point deficit. <coughs> Vulcan was the tackler. Second and four. Mowbray's field goal was good. There's the long pitch out by Echeverry to Vascal, who gets up across the line of scrimmage, rolled forward for what is very close to a first down at the 45-yard line. It is a first down. We've had only one measurement in the game so far. Tatum, John Tatum, number 42, made the tackle for Edmonton. Montreal huddle. Joey Powell flanks to the left along with Pascal, who's wide to the left. Echeverry carries around. He's running. He fakes the pass. He starts to go. He gets by one man and plows ahead across the midfield stripe down to the Edmonton Eskimo 53-yard line where it's a first down. The stop was made by Tatum. Mike Vulcan was also in on it. And the Alouettes come storming back after giving up a field goal. Now it's Sam Rondering to the right this time. He's grabbed and hauled down after a gain of about two and a half yards by Frank Anderson, who seems to make Echeverry his own particular target. And Anderson gets up very, very slowly. Number 51, a tremendous football <laughs> player. No matter what part of Canada you live in is Anderson, who's been in the entire game and must ache in every muscle of his body. Now it's James flanked wide to the left, and Echeverry is going back to pass. It's knocked down at the 40-yard line. Roley Miles came in to knock it out of the reach of Red O'Quinn, the right end, who is in as the pass receiver, so it's a third down situation for Montreal. The Owls will kick the ball from just about midfield. Steve Mendrick, number 73, goes back, standing just inside his own 20. And Roley Miles is finally coming off the field, getting a little rest. The kick will be taken from the Montreal 50. It's an end over end, taken at the 20 by Bright. Bright spun off one tackler, got across the 20, up to about the 23. Check that. That was Oscar Kruger, number 94. And that's the first time Roley Miles has not been in to receive a kick in this game. Eskimos take over, first and 10. At their own 24. And Frankie Anderson is coming off the field to get a little rest. Man, he's played a fine football game. And he hurts all over. Don Getty running the Eskimos. One of them almost went offside. There's the pitch out. And the smashing tackle in there. A gain of about three yards. No more than three by Jackie Parker. Hit by Hugo. Fifteen yards in from the far side of the field. Thirty to twenty for the eminent Eskimos. There's a pitch out to Parker. Parker finds a little room. A necktie tackle finally slows him down as he gets to the 29-yard line. And again, guess who? Tom Hugo. With Dwyer in on it, too, number 89. It's third down. Jackie Parker with his kicking helmet and his gloves on, stands back at his 17-yard line, gets the high snap from center, gets it away. It's a rather wobbly kick taken by Carpuck at the 45. He runs across the field, reverses the field, then he slipped. He went down before an Eskimo got to him. 
He slipped at the 45-yard line. Three and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Montreal Alouettes trailing the Edmonton Eskimos. 30 to 20 in the 1956 Grey Cup game at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. And now again, the Alouettes will try and get something generated against the Edmonton team. They flank James wide to the left. And Echeverry is going back to pass. It's complete to Powell. And Powell shakes off one man, gets away from another. He's still going down across the Edmonton 45. He was finally stopped by Oscar Kruger. It's first and ten for the Alouette. Montreal with the ball inside Edmonton territory at the 44. James goes out wide to the right this time. Echeverry calling signals. He's going back to throw the ball again. It's good protection. Cuts loose a long, long one. It's docked high in the air and down. And it was meant for Red O'Quinn. Miles knocked it down, and James was down in there, and it appeared for a moment the ball might bound into his arm, but it was about a yard too far in the wrong direction. So it's second and ten for Montreal at the 44. Jackie Parker wanders around. <laughs> He looks somewhat aimless on defense, but he's anything but. Echeverry has to pass now. There's the pass grab, then caught by an Edmonton player. Kimoff gets back across his own 45, and the Eskimos take over there. There was an interception that came off the arms of the intended receiver. Meant for Powell. He had it. It seemed to slither away from him and bounced right into the hands of the Edmonton player. And with... Three minutes to go in the third quarter. The Edmonton Eskimos, whose watchword is possession, take over again. That is the third interception by the defending champions. Montreal has two. Miles flanks out to the right. There's the long pitch out to Parker again, and Parker gets a good block. Finds a hole, seeks one man, and gets down across the 45 to the 44-yard line of the Montreal Alouette. Johnny Bright threw a beautiful block that sprung Parker loose for that long gain, and it's first and ten for the Eskimos at Montreal's 44. Getty gives it to Bright, and Bright is still on his feet. Big Billy Ship, all 270 pounds of him, finally reached in there and collapsed Bright. But he was standing there with three other Montreal players hanging grimly to him, and the first man up is Bright. Ship, number 68, is about the biggest thing in Varsity Stadium outside of the BC float this afternoon. Getty calls signals. He's got Parker out to the left. He fakes. Then there's the pitch to Parker. Parker cuts back in inside and gets across the 35-yard line. There was a bit of fancy-dancy Edmontonian hijink for you. Parker took the pitch out and then cut right back inside. And we're going to have a measurement. It's only the second of the day. It looks to be inches short. It's short by perhaps quarter of a length of the ball. Referee Harry Bowden of Toronto took a very, very close look. So it's third and inches, and it looks like they'll go for it. Getty gives it to Kwong, who piles into the right side of that Montreal line. And it's a first down. 
Referee hesitates not a minute in indicating that it's a first down. Huang just plowed in there. We'll find him. Finally dig him up from underneath all the patchwork. He and Frankie Anderson. The Eskimos ground attack in this quarter has produced 10 first downs on the ground in this third quarter, which is a pretty amazing total. There's the pitch to Rolly Miles. Miles finds a little room, and he went high in the air like an Olympic high diver that time, and his forward momentum carried him down to the 25-yard line. He's about six feet in the air. He had the feet taken right out from underneath him. It's a gain of six. It's second and four. With time rapidly running out in the third quarter, the Eskimos leading 30-20. to 20. Tatum, the center, moved up over that football. There's the handoff to the second man, Parker, who cut through from his halfback slot that time and went for about four yards. Third down, about a yard to go. Jackie Parker, who has done a little of everything on offense. They're going to measure again. This is another very close one. You've got a very good picture of it. First down. A couple of substitutions. Big number 60 just heaving on the horizon there is Tex Colder of the Montreal Alouettes. Kruger is going in to replace Roly Miles, who gets a good hand as he comes off. First and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos, who are threatening again. Getty calls signals, gives the ball off, fakes the give rather, passes to Bright. It looked like he might have trapped that ball. The first pass by Edmonton in this period. He didn't trap the ball. It looked as though he might have. It's a completed pass, moving the ball to the Montreal 13, where it's second down and less than a yard to go. A minute flag up in the third quarter. There's the pitch to Bright. Bright gets a good block and rolls across the 10-yard line. Gain of about three. Nelson threw a fine block. Billy Ship, number 68, big fella, made the stop. Tom Hugo calls the defensive signals. Edmonton Eskimos threatening down in that Montreal territory. There's a pitch to Kruger. There's a marker on the play. He's going wide around left hand. He shook off the next eye tackle and gets to about the five. But there was a marker on that play. We'll have to wait and get the official ruling. Offside against the Alouettes. Kruger, who has taken Roly Miles' place in the backfield, ran wide to the left. He carried a man with him for about four. And this moves the ball inside the Montreal five-yard line. Offside penalty being indicated there by the official. Minute flag still up. It's first and goal for the Eminent Eskimos, and the Owls start to bow their backs down on their own goal line. They put in a couple of big linemen. Goes to Bright. Bright moves forward, but he didn't make it. He was tripped up. A fine tackle there. Wong was leading the interference, and they tripped up Bright, who's been Mr. Payoff on the ground. Jim Miller put that good tackle on Bright who carried the ball to the one yard line where it's second and goal minute flag still flying in the third quarter now the Eskimos are over that ball it goes to Getty, he's over for a touchdown Don Getty on the quarterback sneak goes over to make the score Edmonton 36 and Montreal 20 the third touchdown on a quarterback sneak. Getty had done it twice and Sam Echeverry once. 
There's the score, 36 to 20 for Edmonton. The final score of last year's game was 34 to 19 for Edmonton. Now Mobra will make the conversion attempt. Ball being held by Don Getty. Ball's up in the air. It is good. The score is 37 to 20 for the Edmonton Eskimos over the Montreal Alouettes. With a minute flag still flying. And just about time for the kickoff before the end of the third quarter. Big four official Tom Daly is the official timer. He's the man who controls time officially. The times we give you from the clock are unofficial. Joe Mobra will kick. There are your Montreal receivers. Patterson is to the left in that picture with Powell. And James is on Patterson's left. Mobra puts the ball down at the 45. We'll see if he tries to angle that ball away from the ever-dangerous Patterson again. There goes the official whistle. There's the boot, and it's stopped right at the 55-yard line. There's a scuffle, and it looks like the Edmonton Eskimos have recovered again. The Edmonton Eskimos have recovered the football at Montreal's 51-yard line. That hard-charging Edmonton bunch take over and give the Eskimos first and ten. There's apparently time for one more play in this third quarter. Mobra's kick was knocked down. Ball appeared to be blocked by Hugo, and then the Owls couldn't find the ball in the sun. So the Eskimos move up over the football again. There's Getty calling signals. There's the long count, and the handoff. Is to the second man, Parker, who gets across the Montreal 50. And there's the gun ending the quarter. And here's the score. Edmonton 37, Montreal 20. A tremendously powerful ground attack has put Edmonton into a 17-point lead as we go into the final quarter of the 1956 Grey Cup game. And here to tell you about what promises to be a brilliant quarter of football is Steve Douglas. All right, Ted, the Eskimos had their hands on the ball five times in that quarter, scored four times, two touchdowns, a field goal, and a single. A pretty good indication of why they have now a 17-point lead. Second down and eight yards to go. Ball on the Alouette's 48-yard line. Edmonton in possession. Parker swinging wide to the far side. Bewley's got him. A nice tackle by Bill Bewley. Back on the 53-yard line. Loss on the play is five yards. And the punting team goes in for Edmonton. Joey Powell and Pete Carpuck will go deep for Montreal. The weather in Toronto continues to be beautiful. Brilliant sunshine. The clouds have almost entirely disappeared from the sky. Temperature in the very low 30s. Parker kicking from his 45. End over end to Pal at the 23, and he's driven back to about the 15-yard line. Bendiak and Mendrick, the man on the tackle for Edmonton. 27,425 Grey Cup fans in attendance this afternoon at Varsity Stadium. New high watermark in that respect. Montreal coming out. The ball is on the uh, 17 and a half yard line. First and 10 for the Alouettes. Etcheberry back to throw it. Decides to run and is smothered on the 15. A loss of maybe two yards in the play. Number 55, Mike King is one of the Eskimos who got him. And number 51, Frank Anderson, that's to be expected. As Ted said, he's been making Etcheberry his personal target most of the afternoon. Number 64 in there, too, for Edmonton, Mike Vulcan. 
They've been putting quite a rush on Mr. Etcheberry all afternoon so far. Joey Powell flanks way out on this side. And Etch looks and is nailed again. He had Red O'Quinn and Hal Patterson way down the field. And somebody broke in very rapidly, probably Art Walker. Vulcan is one of the two men who hit him. Looked like Mike King, 55 the other, and it was. The Eskimos are giving the Alouettes small and uh, maybe we may better say big fits right now. With a 17 point margin and about 13 and a half minutes left to go and Sam is in the end zone to do the kicking. He gets a high floater out to Mendrick and he is dumped on the 40 yard line. Doug McNichol, the big right defensive end, got down fast into the high floating punt and dumped Mendrick. Officials placed the ball down on the 39. Good ground level shot for you there as the squads change. Here we go, offensively Edmonton, defensively Montreal. A 9-3 defense employed. Hand off is to Bright. He drives down. Tommy Moran got him first. Johnny Blacher helps on the tackle. And one, Sheridan number 64. Bright's advance to the 32-yard line, about seven and a half. Tom Hugo, 48 there, talking it up. 72 there is Jimmy Miller, 68 Billy Ship, and 74 was Doug McNichol. Normie Kwong was nailed momentarily, but the man who got him first let him slide away, and finally Staten made the stop. It is a first down. Kwong picking up sufficient yardage for the first down to the 28-yard line. Getty has still got it, looks and throws, complete to Bright. He is down and look at that man drive, down to the four-yard line. There have been only five completions for Edmonton this afternoon out of 12 attempts, and at least three that we can recall right now have been tossed to Johnny Bright at each time for sizable gains. First down, five yards to go for a touchdown for Edmonton. Montreal packs the forward wall, almost 12 men. Parker into the end zone. Jackie Parker, a five-yard slashing drive off the right side. Into the end zone, standing up and barely a hand laid on him. 43 to 20 right now, as Joe Mobra will try again. He's been having much more success of late after missing the first two that we thought perhaps might make a difference. Here it is, it is good. And the Eskimos lead the Alouettes by 44 to 20. And insofar as the battle between Canada's two top football players, Jackie Parker and Hal Patterson is concerned, both have picked up two TDs. Time remaining unofficially, 12 minutes, 11 seconds. That has been the clock here at the stadium, very close to official time, which as Ted told you a short time back, is being checked today by Big Four official Tom Daly of Ottawa. 
Edmonton moving from right to left on your screen as the shadows definitely are lengthening now almost entirely across the field. We'll kick off and Mobra is the man for the job. Hal Patterson and James are deep. It's a wobbler again on the ground picked up by Tommy Hugo and he goes down on the 51 yard line. He was hit first by Bill Briggs, number 41, by Johnny Wyatt, number 86, and Mike Kamech, number 56. 51 yard line, just about halfway between the sideline stripes. First and 10 for the Alouettes, trailing by an unbelievable 24 points. Etcheberry looking, throwing very deep, intended for and completed to James. He dropped the ball. He had it, started to turn around and didn't have a tight enough grip on it. That was down in the vicinity of the 27-yard line. Bendrick, number 73, goes in replacing Frankie Anderson. Hendrick playing left half on defense. Etcheberry back to fire again, and Mendrick is in there and blocks the ball. A nice piece of coaching strategy by Pop Ivy. He puts the man in on his very first play. He rushes the passer and bats it down. Third down and 10 to go on the Montreal 51-yard line. And the Eskimos are a little slow about sending men back. They are figuring that perhaps there will be no punt come. Well, we'll see. Mendrick started to go back. Sam is back in punt formation. The Eskimos think it might be a fake. Sam boots it, and it's a honey. Sends Mendrick way back over his shoulder catch on the 15. And hit by Ted Elsby down on the 17-yard line. The score, Edmonton 44, Montreal 20. Eskimos ball on their own 18-yard line, first and 10. Don Getty still quarterbacking, doing a tremendous job. And oh, he got nowhere on that one as Doug McNichol diagnosed the play perfectly and nailed Johnny Bright before he could take a step. Loss in the play is roughly five yards. Back to the 13 from the original line of scrimmage at the 18. Coach Douglas P. Head Walker of the Alouettes is never very exuberant, but now he is pacing restlessly up and down in front of his bench. The play moves to the right, Getty throws a pro pass over the line, it's broken up. Intended for Steve Fendiak, the right end. So it's third and 15, and the punting team comes in for the Eskimos. If you have noticed that Jackie Parker changes helmets when he goes back to punt, that is absolutely correct. There is not the broad nose guard on the helmet he uses for punting purposes. He stands on his goal line, Parker. And he gets off a floater that uh, Carpuck takes on the 49-yard line at the 45 and is snowed under finally at the 43. It will be Alouette's ball first and 10 on the 43 yard line. Mike King and Mike Kmetch led the attack along with Mike Falcon. Well hell that's honestly true isn't it? Three Mikes right in a row. Etcheverry back almost to midfield, looks, throws, very long, intended for Patterson. Incomplete as he was checked very carefully by Rokamp and Kruger. 
When the Eskimos had to give up the football and punt there, that was only the third time in the second half that that situation had come about. They controlled the ball so beautifully and have scored on all the other occasions. Second and ten. Ball is actually on the Edmonton 44-yard line. Bob James, a wide flanker to the far side. Pal on this side. Etcheverry through the air again. Completed to Patterson. And he's down at the 30-yard line. Mobra, number 77, made the stop on Hal Patterson. First down for the Alouettes. Nine minutes and 40 seconds unofficially left to go. Edmonton in front by 44 to 20. It is the Alouette's first first down on passing this half, indicative of what's happening today. A long one to Patterson. He's got it, but he is not over. He is a yard out, a great catch again. Gee, I don't know how he does it, and I don't think anybody else does. Of 11 Montreal completions today, Ed Pitkin points out that that is number five that Hal Patterson has caught. Oscar Kruger is the man who just couldn't do anything about it. Well, the Alouettes are a yard away from pay dirt. Let's see. The fake by Abruzzi and a fumble. Recovered by Edmonton. Tatum made the recovery for Edmonton. Johnny Tatum, number 42, who plays left inside linebacker on defense and was jamming it on that goal line, picked up the fumble. Third Alouette fumble today, and all have been recovered by Edmonton. The drive goes into the right side of the line, up almost to the five-yard line. Johnny Bright, number 84, the ball carrier, picking up four yards, leaving it second down and six to go at the five-yard line. Tommy Kwong tries the left side, picks up maybe two yards, leaving them short by roughly three of a first down. <laughs> Big Doug McNichol, the man who picked him off as he went through. Parker will have to punt, probably from inside his end zone, by about five yards. And the Alouettes have Pal and Carpuck in the vicinity of the Edmonton 45-yard line. Jackie kicks from the goal line to Pal at the 45, at the 40, and hit from behind and thrown down hard. Mike Kamich, number 56, is the man who did it. Just inside the 40-yard line, he put him down, and the Alouettes take over first and 10 at that point, trailing by 24 points. Clock shows eight minutes left to go. <laughs> Flankers left and right, James and Pal at your very back throwing again. Fakes once, throws very deep, intended for O'Quinn, and it was tipped and intercepted by Parker at the 25, the 30. 35 on this side, the 40 goes out of bounds. The second time successively that the Alouettes in Edmonton territory have seen the ball change hands very unexpectedly. Tatum recovered the fumble on the one yard line 
And on this tipped forward pass, Parker ran it back from about the one to the officials say the 42. And that is the fourth interception by Edmonton today. Getty has still got it, throwing on the run. Johnny Bright made a miraculous, unbelievable type catch down around his boot tops, but it is short of a first down on the 50 yard line, leaves it second down and two to go. Bright once again plowing his way around the right end and down for a first down into Montreal territory on the 51 yard line. The ball game today is becoming more and more reminiscent of last year. Last year Montreal led at the half 1918 and Edmonton grounded out in the second half. It was 1914 Edmonton today and they're grinding it out again. That is bright once again. Hit by Tom Moran and Hal Patterson, 77, 75 respectively for Montreal. Six and a half minutes to the final gun. 44 to 20, Edmonton in front. The defending champions from the West who have won the Grey Cup the last two years. Bidding very fair right now to make it three in a row. Normie Kwong right through the center. A fast handoff from quarterback Don Getty. And that is good for a first down to the 39-yard line. Johnny Tatum still centering for the Eskimos. Play moves this way. Here's the pitch out. That's Kruger carrying and hit down by John Bleacher finally after he had been knocked off stride by Tom Moran. He got maybe one yard in advance of the line of scrimmage to the 38-yard line. Tommy Hugo shaken up on that last play. He has been a couple of times today. Coming off the field very slowly. And McClellan, number 62, comes in. <laughs> Getty back to heave. Down the center it goes. And it is broken up. Fletcher got his hand on it. Tipped it away from the intended arms of number 94, Oscar Kruger. So it is third down and roughly nine yards to go. Parker will do the booting for Edmonton. Carpock and Pal, the deep men for Montreal. Five minutes and ten seconds unofficially left to go. Parker from the 50-yard line. A wobbler directed away from Joey Powell. He's got it on the three-yard line and is knocked out of bounds by Mendrick at about the eight. Here's the score. Edmonton, 44. Montreal, 20. Five-minute signal has just been given from the field. Montreal possession. Deep in their own territory on the eight yard line, first and ten, trailing by 24 points. Edgeberry rolling out this way, looking, throwing very deep, intended for James. He's got it, and he is immediately down at midfield 
by two Eskimo tacklers. Raleigh Miles is one of them, and the other is Jackie Parker. 55 yards the play advance, barely inside Edmonton territory. Alouettes have flankers left and right. James and Powell respectively. Etcheverry through the air again. Throws a wobbler out here to O'Quinn. Red's got it. And he is hit hard, but gets away and finally is down on the 32-yard line. Kimoff, number 80, hit him first. Then Miles and Briggs completed the job. It's the first down for the Alouettes. And the nose of that football is right on the 32-yard line. 15 yards in from these sidelines. Roger Nelson is coming off for Edmonton, getting a very well-deserved rest. Ted Tully, number 70, in replacing him. Hatchery rolling out to the left, looking, throwing down the middle, intended for Red O'Quinn, and Mendrick was checking on him very closely. Second down and 10 yards to go. On the Edmonton 33 yard line. They're in front by 44 to 20. This will mark if they hold that margin, which is a fair assumption right now, their third consecutive Grey Cup victory. It's a very looking down the middle again to Patterson. One of those impossible catches and he's down on the 20 yard line. Briggs and Rokamp made the stop. First down, Alouette. Back in 1945, 6 and 7, the great Toronto Argonaut team of that era won the Grey Cup three times running, oddly enough, beating Winnipeg on each occasion. James left, Pal right. Echeverry will go through the air again. He fakes once. He's got the rush on him and gets away, but finally goes down and is smothered. Raleigh Cook was the man who was after him, left end defensively. Hal Walker points out an oddity in connection with the Argonauts having beaten Winnipeg three times running. It will be the same situation here with the Edmonton Eskimos winning three and the Alouettes dropping them. It's very looked. Fakes once, throws to the far side, completed to James. He's hit once, gets away, away from Tully, and he may go all the way. He's down at about the two-yard line, a tremendous play by Bob James. Gee, how he got away from about three of those tacklers is almost unbelievable. It is two yards from pay dirt. The clock here shows three minutes to go. That has not been given from the field as yet. Patabruzzi, number 83, Pasquale, goes over from two yards out for the Montreal touchdown. Three minutes just signaled from the field. Bill Buley will try the conversion at your very holding. It is good. And there is a great fracas going on way down in the end zone over that one. Varsity Stadium's playing field with 44-27 the count. Edmonton over Montreal. Time remaining about two minutes and 50 seconds. The playing field will be immediately inundated 
by a great percentage of the 27,435 fans when that final gun does go. This has been a thrilling football game in many, many respects. Disheartening, of course, for supporters of Montreal and a great performance by the Edmonton Eskimos with right now a 17-point margin. <laughs> Incidentally, we'll have some special football interviews for you shortly after the end of the game, so don't go away. There'll be folks you'll definitely want to meet. High end over end to Kruger at the 20, 25, 30, still going. And down finally on the 33-yard line. Billy Shipp made the first stop on him. Ted Ellsby in as well. Eskimos are set, flankers out to the right. One of them's a mile offside, but he gets back. Johnny Bright. Look at him, pull down. And he had Bob McClellan right around his ankles, but he pulled him about, oh, maybe five yards. First down, Edmonton. Ball on their 48-yard line. They got it to Kruger, he cuts around, but Tom Moran makes a nice tackle around the ankles on him and gets him down after a pickup of maybe two yards. It will be second and eight. Eddie Fitkin's facts and figures here show that he, Johnny Bright that is, has made 160 yards on 22 carries. You'd have to say he's done a pretty good job today. When he churns those knees of his high in the air, he is almost impossible to stop. Getty has still got it, looking and throwing. Intended downfield for number 71, Steve Bendiak. Little too hot to handle. A minute and 25 seconds unofficially remaining. Third down situation here. Jackie Parker will go back and try to hoof that football well down the field. And Carpuck on the left and Pal on the right will try to bring it right back up. That is a very high short wobbler that Pal takes on the 29 and is hit by a low tackle first by number 41, Bill Briggs, and then Steve Mendrick, number 73, helped out to complete the job. So it's first and 10 for Montreal on their 31-yard line. The man with the minute flag has gone to the sideline, but it's not up as yet. Official timer Tommy Daly is standing right beside him. The minute flag has gone up as Etcheverry rolls out this way. Throws almost intercepted by Bill Briggs. Had his hands on it, but he was badly off balance at the time. Score is 44 Edmonton, 27 Montreal. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Alouettes on their own 31-yard line. Another ball club won three times in a row in Grey Cup competition. Queen's University in 22 and 23 and 24. Echeverry stumbles over one of his own men in the backfield, Johnny Blacher, and down he went. Thank you. 
Hello, it's ready again. It's very back. Screen pass type intended for Pascal, and he loses it. Secretary of the CRU, Harry McBrien, has the gray cup down at the sidelines. It will be almost impossible to find Harry or the cup in the mass of humanity that is moving toward the sidelines now as the seconds tick away the ball game. He is down in the vicinity of the 50-yard line with the gray cup held very firmly and a couple of Toronto's gentlemen in blue are standing around him. Minute flag up. Edmonton taking possession on the 24-yard line. As Montreal failed to get out of their own end, trying for another touchdown. Long pass over here to Parker. Patterson forces him out of bounds. And a policeman lost his jaunty blue hat. Once again, the two great players who competed for Canada's most valuable player award this year come together. Edmonton, first down, goal to go on the seven and a half yard line. And still time for one play, at least. The Grey Cup, well, it was somewhere in the midst of that mess of humanity. Parker running wide, trying to get away from Dwyer. He does, he's over! <laughs> Not since back in 1923 has a ball club winning the Grey Cup scored more than 50 points but the Edmonton Eskimos have done it now. It was Queen's University back in 1923 that beat Regina 54 to nothing. The ball game is not over yet, and the public address announcer is trying to clear fans off the field. This is uh, what is known as an almost impossible task. Policemen are all over the field chasing them away. The conversion attempt is coming up. That's the third touchdown for Parker this afternoon. And the Eskimos were really trying to get Jackie to score it. They passed to him and Patterson knocked him out of bounds on the eight yard line. And then on that wide sweep around right end, he just made it in Coffin Corner before he was hit and knocked out of bounds on the far side. Well, except for a small patch around where the players are situated, there is general confusion here at this moment. <laughs> the delay is undoubtedly occasioned by the fact that we don't have a football for the conversion. It was lost somewhere over on the far side of the field when Parker, going out of bounds after scoring the touchdown, dropped the ball. Jackie Parker has scored three touchdowns, as we just noted. That plus the single that he kicked gives him a total of 19 points and should be a new individual record. The old mark was 15. Of course, at that time, touchdowns were valued at only five points. Now they are six, but even so, had they been five today, with the addition of that single, Parker still would have broken the old mark. Conversation between one of the officials and Herb Trowick 
acting captain of the Alouettes. Well, we may get going here at any time if somebody happens to have a spare football and is nearby Varsity Stadium in Toronto, you might uh, run in and hand it to the officials. Or they might put a helmet down and try booting that over. One of the Edmonton Eskimo equipment boys has gone into their dressing room, probably to bring out one of their footballs. <coughs> Earlier this week, CRU Secretary Harry McBrien stated that there would be 18 footballs available here today. Also said, of course, verifying what we had thought before, that the conversions would be tried as they used to be tried from the field into towards the end zone. Well, they somewhere along the line today have lost a total then of 18 pieces of pigskin. The ball game is over, ladies and gentlemen. The officials have decided to let the conversion go, and referee Harry Bowden gave the no conversion signal. So as the fans just inundate the field, as you can see, the final score is this. The Edmonton Eskimos winning the Grey Cup for the third consecutive year. And gee, their fans will just about tear Toronto apart tonight. Edmonton beat Montreal 51 to 27. It was 26, 25, two years ago, 34, 19, last year in Vancouver. Here today, 51 to 27. Well, there's the Grey Cup, ladies and gentlemen, at the bottom of your screen. And the intrepid gentleman holding on to it is Mr. Harry McBrien, secretary of the CRU. He's now handed it off to another gentleman who is taking his life almost literally in his hands. Doug Maxwell, you've been keeping a scoring summary of this second half as well as the first. Let's have a recap on that right now, will you? Well, at the second half, it was 19 to 14 going in. Echeverry, after one minute and 28 seconds, went over for a touchdown on a quarterback sneak. That was after Tom Hugo had recovered an Eskimo fumble at the Edmonton 16. It was 20 to 19 for the Alouettes. Edmonton moved then from their 41 to the Alouette 30. He picked, and Jackie Parker picked up a single with a kick to the deadline. That tied the score at 20 all. Then Johnny Bright picked up his fourth touchdown in Grey Cup competition. The Alouettes had fumbled an Edmonton kick, recovered by either Bright or Vulcan. We couldn't see which. Mobra converted. After Bright got the touchdown, it was 27 to 20 for Edmonton. Then... Miles intercepted an Echeverry pass that was intended for Patterson at the Alouette 45. Mobra got a field goal from the Alouette 25 when the Edmonton drive stalled. That made it 30 to 20 for Edmonton. Getty got his second touchdown of the day and a quarterback sneak from the one after Kimoff had taken an interception at the Edmonton 47. And 11 plays later, he had the touchdown. Getty did. Mobra converted. It was 37 to 20. In the fourth quarter, Jackie Parker got touchdown number three in Grey Cup competition from five yards out. Mobra converted, it was 44 to 20, and then Echeverry started passing at his own eight. He found James, O'Quinn, Patterson, and James. Abruzzi took it over for the touchdown from one yard out. Buley converted, 44 to 27. And then in the final seconds of the game, Jackie Parker gained Grey Cup immortality with his third touchdown. The final score, 50 to 27. The convert was granted, making it 51 to 27. Game over. Now let's have a few comments from Ted Reynolds. Well, there's not much more you can say now because it's all over. 51 to 27 is indicative of what Edmonton did to Montreal's team and Montreal's hopes. They were just too much for them. Jackie Parker and Hal Patterson, sort of the men of the hour, were both tremendous. But Parker outshone them all today with three touchdowns. He was tremendous on defense as well as offense. But Patterson is still a wonderful football player still as great as they say he is. He caught six passes and went over two times, and they were both tremendous. The Edmonton team was a superb machine in this game. Thank you very much, Ted. 
Three men previously held the scoring records. Craig, Conacher, and Story. Parker is the new boss man in that department. Thanks right now to Hal Walker for his fine spotting today. That's statistician work of Eddie Fitkin. That was a real good one. And wonderful to have Ted Reynolds here doing an excellent job sharing play-by-play -play commentary with yours truly, Steve Douglas, and of course, Doug Maxwell in all his fine color. So it's goodbye temporarily, but just that from Varsity Stadium. The score, 51-27 Edmonton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, over to the feature performers of the 1956 Grey Cup Classic. Sam Echeverry, the field general of the Montreal Alouettes. Jackie Parker of the Canadian champion Edmonton Eskimos. First of all, Jackie Parker, congratulations on winning the Grey Cup once more and racking up three touchdowns. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Jackie, what was the uh, big play today, especially those double uh, pitch outs of yours? Well, of course, the double pitch outs helped us a lot. We, we played a real tough ball club out there, and I mean, it could have gone, gone either way any time. I mean, okay. we, were, we just got a few breaks, and they helped a lot. You know, I'd like to have Sam Etcheverry here. Sam, this is the third year that you've faced Edmonton in this uh, Grey Cup Classic. Did you find their defense today much stronger than the two previous experiences? Well, it's hard to say, Larry. We lost, and uh, I think Larry, uh, Jackie was trying to be nice when he said it could go on the other way. Uh, they got some breaks, and we got some breaks, but they capitalized more on their breaks. I mean, they made some touchdowns out of theirs. Uh, we thought that we might come back and win this year, but, well, we lost again. So, well, Sam, you fellows certainly tried. I know it's picked up uh, a bit of blood on your nose there. These boys, incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, rushed... Uh, from the field to be with you here in the uh, in the room of the Varsity Stadium. You know, one curious thing I'd like to ask our friend Jackie Parker here, Sam. I guess the folks know by now I'm also from Montreal. Uh, what do you like uh, playing out there? Some quarterback or do you like playing on the half line, Jackie? Well, I, I like them both equally well, I think. I, I like to get back there and have back some because you get more chance to run the ball. Hmm? Jackie, uh, what do you figure was the turning point of this afternoon's ball game? Well, I, I thought maybe the turning point was when... Uh, when we kicked off and, and got the ball on the kickoff, I, I thought that that gave us a little edge. And we kicked off and it hit one of their linemen and we recovered. You know, we can't help but admire the way that you run and pass, but one of the beautiful passing highlights of this afternoon's ball game was that aerial from a Mr. Echeverry here over to Hal that, Patterson. That was a tremendous play. It was a tremendous throw, and I, I don't know how in the world Hal caught it. Well, what do you say we ask our friend Sam over here? Sam, just how did you connect on that play? Well, uh, it's happened a few times before. It's not me, it's Hal that does the catching, you know. There's uh, very few guys who can catch like that. I saw that ball go, uh, Sam, and went beautifully. Yeah, but he was well covered, uh, Larry, and uh, he made a wonderful catch out of it, which he usually does. There's, I don't think there's any other receiver can make a catch like that. Well, Sam, that's where you certainly want to take this occasion to congratulate you on winning the Big Four Championship this season and putting up another terrific fight in this great cup final. And to Jackie Parker, the... One of the main reasons why the Great Cup returns to Edmonton. Congratulations, Jackie. You've certainly given us some great moments in Canadian football. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Sam, that's a very wait till next year. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure at this point to have with us here in room five of Varsity Stadium the coveted Great Cup. And with us, the president of the Canadian champions, Mr. Mo Lieberman of Edmonton, will now have his captain the great Normie Kwong. Mr. Lieberman, the loot, and Mr. Kwong. Well, this is certainly a, a very, very big occasion, Normie. Here's the Great Cup resting in Edmonton for another year. This is the third consecutive year. This must be a, certainly a great moment for you. Well, Larry, it's one of the biggest thrills in my lifetime. Winning that third one was uh, really a... I don't know how to express it. Certainly wonderful. Mo Lieberman, as president of the Edmonton Eskimos, uh, I guess your team certainly must be extremely, extremely proud of it, winning three times in a row. Oh, I'm very, very proud of the team, the coaching staff, and every individual member of our uh, football club. Uh, I happen to be very much honored today because I was president of the Eskimo Football Club for two years, and in both years they have won the Great Cup. And I certainly owe them a great debt and I think the city of Edmonton as a whole are very, very proud of our very good football team. Well, they certainly have every right to be. And Mo Lieberman, I'd just like our audience to watch this historic moment as Normie Kwong, captain of the Edmonton Eskimos, receives the Great Cup. You know, Normie, watching you out there today, you certainly have a lot of power, and uh, your running has been one of the great features of this uh, Edmonton attack. 
Uh, this whole deception that you have out there, uh, you're, you're, what strikes me, and I'm just a fan, is you're terrific faking. Just uh, how do you go about that? It's really spectacular to see from an audience. Well, Larry, we work on that uh, faking quite a bit in our offense. And I think uh, Art Club, uh, everybody carries through their fakes and runs every play, looks like, the, like, like uh, any other one. And we uh, try to run everyone like that. And just one more observation, Mo. I think that uh, I might like to ask Normie this one. Your Edmonton line seems to be much stronger than uh, the one that we saw here last year. Well, uh, Larry, I think both lines are just about the same. We came up today, though, with a lot of desire, and we had to put. We knew we had to rush at Etcheverry, or he'd pass us out of the ballpark. So we just kept after him and tried to beat him that way. Well, thank you very much, Norm Kwong and Mo Lieberman. Congratulations to you, sir. You've got a fine bunch of boys. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, as well with us today, we have among the uh, gallant losers, one of Canada's greatest players of all time, recently named the outstanding football player of 1956 from Montreal, the great Harold Patterson. Hal, congratulations on a very, very wonderful job out there today. Boy, oh boy, you certainly worked. Hal, you got two touchdowns out there today. Uh, I was particularly uh, delighted to watch that one play which put Montreal ahead, of course, uh, in which you pulled out of the left end position, swept to the right, and Sam uh, more or less faked the defenders out and lateral to you. That was a beautiful play, Hal. Yes, Sam uh, really done a good job on that. He uh, made the uh, option play on the outside backer and uh, made it possible for me to go over. Tell me just one more question, uh, Mr. Patterson. Uh, another great thrill that you provided uh, for the Alouettes today was uh, that pass that Sam Matchavery threw to you. Now, Sam is a very uh, nice chap, and he said that it's strictly all the credit goes to you. But when you caught that pass deep in the end zone of Edmonton, uh, did you figure you had that ball all the way? Well, no, Larry. Uh, I was very lucky on my part that I uh, even saw the ball because uh, the defender done a very good job of uh, hitting the ball, and it was just luck that it had come my way. And what about the Edmonton pass defense? Of course, they realized that Hal Patterson as one of the top aerial targets uh, in Canadian football, they pr do a pretty good job of covering out there, Hal. Yes, they did a very yeah. good job. Well, Hal, be sure to uh, tell Coach Walker and the Alouettes that uh, even in loss, they put up a great fight, and we're certainly especially proud of you. 1956 was certainly a great season for Hal Patterson. Thank you. They Thank you very much, Hal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us as well two outstanding boys here with the Edmonton Eskimos. Gentleman over here, number 84, is a veteran campaigner in the Western Wars, Mr. Johnny Bright, whose touchdown today broke the backs of the Montreal team. And over here, a boy that, well, a comparative newcomer to Canadian professional football, uh, one of the great players from the University of Western Ontario, and now the quarterback of the new Canadian champions, Edmonton Eskimos, Mr. Don Getty. Johnny, I'll turn to you as the old pro out there and... Uh, that touchdown of yours uh, clinched that ball game for Edmonton. They just how did it work, Johnny? Well, uh, it was just a short pitch out into the sideline, and uh, had our, our uh, right guard and right tackle put in need to play, and they knocked everybody down. It was just easy to score on the play. Well, the, uh, on the way that you were running out there, I, I like that deception and that uh, split T formation that you have. Well, that is one of the basic uh, secrets of operating split T is your deception you're faking in the back there. Now, let's see Don Getty over here. Don, it's certainly... Uh, great news to us here in the East to hear the, that you were named the starting quarterback uh, during the late, latter part of the season and into the playoffs. And we're very, very proud of you, the way that you've come through. It must be pretty hard to be the field general out there in such an involved, intricate system as the split tee. Well, I'd say it, uh, with a team like that, it really isn't that hard because uh, you've got all those fellows going for you and wonderful backs and a terrific line. And I think the... Uh, Tremendous coaching, and uh, in that case, the quarterbacking job isn't too hard. I bet this Don Getty did a wonderful job this year, Don. And, uh, John, I guess that uh, you were very, very proud of the way he handled you. Well, we've always thought quite a bit of Don. Of course, you know, he's been playing behind Jackie Parker, and Jackie is quite a quarterback himself. But uh, uh, Don could play a first-string quarterback for any team in Canada, and I think from now on he'll be our first-string quarterback. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We certainly appreciate your cooperation, and congratulations on winning the Great Cup. Thank you very much, Don Getty and Johnny Bright. Have I just got one moment left to say hello to Mr. Pop Ivy over here? Is Pop here? Hi, Pop. How are you? Congratulations, Pop. Thank you, Larry. Gee, this is really something, a great moment for Edmonton, a great moment for uh, Western uh, football fo followers. What do you think, Coach Ivy, uh, was the turning point of the ball game today? 
Well, Larry, I can't recall any turning point at any particular time. I, I just uh, would like to say that uh, we're real proud of those kids. We feel like they've done a, done a terrific Bob, job. I, I see our time is up. May I say in closing, congratulations on a job very, very well done. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, and that's all here from Varsity Stadium. This is Larry O'Brien saying goodbye from Varsity Stadium in Toronto.